Hello everyone, welcome to the Wild Beyond the Witchlight. This is one of our Patreon Greyhawk campaigns and everyone that you see here on the screen is a Patreon. Shout out to our Patreons without you, all of the cool things that we do here, the one shots, the three shots, the marathons, everything we do on this channel would not be possible. Thank you so much everyone for all of your support. If you're interested in more information about what you can get for being a Patreon, you can check out this link there in the chat. And if you ever want to see any of our previous episodes, especially for this one as well, you can find them on our YouTube. Link is also there in the chat. If you'd like to interact with this game, <laughs> there are a couple of ways you could do so. You can redeem channel points, which you get for free just by hanging out, chatting, lurking, whatever you like, to grant a blessing to the player of your choice, including myself. What a blessing is, is essentially a pocket reroll. So they get to re-roll and take whichever is higher. Or if you'd like to add an element of fate to the narrative in which and we already have. Go fast. <laughs> Every $10 guarantees a draw from the deck of many things to the player of your choice. Yes, we have quite a few of these to draw right off the bat. Um, but first. By no one's fault. I have so many people. I wrote down everyone's names. I wrote down everyone whose fault it is. It's right in front of me. But before we get into that, we're going to go around and just tell me a little bit about who you are, where we can find you. Give us a little refresher about your character, and we'll start off with V. Hello, I'm Vertigo Cross. I'm a Twitch streamer over at Vertigo Cross. I like to just play, you know, various games throughout the day. Doesn't really matter what. Hang out with my friends like Maddie, Emma, Stella, and Zombie. Who are all here. <laughs> but you I... can find us either playing games like Dead by Daylight or Super People. Or on Monday, I'll play with Stella for Mix Monday Madness. Where we generally try to make things either fun or sexy. Excellent. Can you unmute in Google Meets, please? Thanks. Yeah. Okay. Next. I don't know why I was muted on Google Meet. I don't know, but I just I noticed. Also. I've never hit that button. Hi. Okay, next we got Zombie. Hello, I am Jacob. I am Zombie. I am Z. I am whatever those three names you like to call me. I am the lore keeper, the clip master. Probably do too many clips, but that's up to your own discretion. Today, I am do I am playing rather uh, Chester Cunningham, who is a wild magic mage hand. Uh, in the circus, he's done all kinds of cool things in the circus, um, uh, but still doesn't know where he is. But he does have a, a fancy map now, so he can sort of figure stuff out where he's going to be going and such. Um, and then, uh, as far as me goes, I'm mostly on Twitter. Um, you can find me uh, uh, twittercom zomfed 89 You can find me in Stella's Discord, Robo's Discord. I basically live there. And they let me have let that be my home, so I very much appreciate it. Also, my home that's been my home for also a, a number of years has been youtube.com slash nice nirvana, where me and my friend Matthew over there, he's one of my friends. He's he's um me and him talk about nerdy news and all kinds of other stuff there. And we have a, a pretty good time. He's put up with me for years. I must be doing something all right. Excellent. Thank you, thank you. Next we have B Street Homes. Hey guys, uh, I'm Matthew, or as you'll find me most places on the internet, B Street Homes. Um, I don't do a whole lot of things, but you can find me on places like uh, Twitter and uh, Stella's Discord. Um, and as Jacob mentioned, on Mondays we do a nerd news show at 10 p.m. Eastern Time. Uh, if you join Stella's Discord, Jacob is always very good to post a link in there when we are getting started on Mondays. So. Uh, that is a great way to always keep up with the show. And uh, I am playing Kalik. <laughs> First time Kalik has ever forgotten himself. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm playing Kalik, who, uh, whose parents raised him uh, his whole life to be an adventurer, and he has finally set out to earn glory, fame, and gold. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you. We're going to skip Emma for one quick second. Maddie, why don't you tell us about you? Hi, I'm Matihi. Uh, you can find me occasionally streaming with um, my little PNG tuber, Jimothy, which I'm not bringing up right now, maybe later. Um, you can also find me on Twitter and Instagram at Maddie Matihi. 
Uh, and I'm mostly here every other Wednesday um, playing Macaria, and I'll talk about Macaria in a sec. Um, but I'm also over on Emma Panata's channel, IGM Curse of Strahd, every Tuesday, um, where I'm a big mummy Strahd, so it's a great time and flirting with all the PCs, which I love. Um, and also every other Friday playing Kondo, who is an airbender in our Avatar Legends game. Um, and I play here, I play Rakaria, and Rakaria is a tiefling druid with the sage background. Uh, she has a book that she does a bunch of drawings in for various monsters that she meets, um, and ones that she finds attractive, except for the toad. Fuck the toad. <laughs> Um, and also <laughs> Kalix's best friend, and also my also other best friend, Sir Lancelot, who is my snake, and he knows a lot of things. Yeah. Excellent. Thank you so much. And we have joining us for the very first time on The Wild Beyond the Witchlight, Emma Panada. So don't worry too much about your character, but tell me about you. Where can we find you? What do you do? Hi, I'm Emma Panada. You can find me on Twitter and Twitch at Emma Panada. I like long walks on the beach and snow cones uh, and ice cream, you know, all that good stuff. Um, on Twitch, I run various TTRPG games and then you can find me here every Wednesday because now I am in both Patreon games since I couldn't let Z be all alone. Um, it's, it's kind of like part of our uh, like group therapy sessions is we all have to be <laughs> has to be like at least two of us at all times you know the emotional so, support patron yeah there it's you a go. very very strong support system <laughs> indeed <laughs> all right uh so we're gonna start off with all these fucking cards thank you so much everyone for all of the support we have uh, so many draws okay so how we're gonna... many draws all right we're gonna start from fewest to most so diabli tio thank you so much for this card to ricaria tell me when to stop mm, stop okay all right okay next we've got kalik Tell me when to stop. You have three cards. Oh, man. <laughs> uh, stop. Okay. Stop. Okay. And stop. You can see the trauma. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right, all right. So thank you, Vertigo Cross, for two cards, and Dale Belitio for one card. Hold on, let me write this down. You, have you seen that uh, Godfather and uh, Alpha have also added yes. to the pile? Yes, yes, yes. Um, <laughs> okay. <laughs> Next, we've got Lavelli. You have three cards. Wowie. All right, do a double tap here. All right. One, my two. <laughs> And then I want the bottom card of the deck. Stop. Okay. What a very interesting combination of cards here. Hell yeah. So Everyone thank you so much. Died. Thank you so much, Diablito, for one card and Matthew for two. Next we have Chester. You have four cards. What? What? I thought <laughs> I was out of this. <laughs> Shit. Okay. Um. Let's have a little fun. Uh, stop. Okay. Stop. Okay. Please stop. <laughs> One more. <laughs> Another stop. Okay. Said, Please, Stella. Gosh, she kept going. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. <laughs> Jeez, this is uh, this is wild. So the talents card will destroy a magic item. What happens if it destroys like a bag of holding? What happens to all the stuff in the bag? Of it gets out? destroyed. It um, oh my god! It gets destroyed. <laughs> yeah. I'm just gonna throw this out there. If I'm counting correctly, I think it's easier for Emma to choose the cards that she doesn't get. It depends how many cards I got. So there are nine left. Uh, so pick. So pick a card that you won't draw. You have you have eight, eight cards. cards. <laughs> Jesus fucking Christ. So you're not gonna okay. this card that I draw, you're not gonna get. Uh that one. Wow. 
Okay. Emma, I was only five of those. <laughs> Thank you so much, V, Matihi, Geek Dice, and Diablitio for those Thank cards. you, everybody. So funny. So I need a, a little... All right. So I'm going to have to write these down. But so we're going to open Wait, up so the scene. Wait, so there's one card left that no one has. That's kind of sad. There's one card in the yeah. whole deck. Yeah. One Music card. We just started. started. One yeah. card. We just started. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um. So we're going to start off with rewinding just a little bit. You hear music all around you as the Witchlight Carnival opens up. There are people running around mirthfully. You see bubbles popping in the air around you. Giant dragonflies shimmering as they swoop by. Why isn't the music starting? Okay. Um, and we see among the crowd of people that are coming in, an individual who is all by themselves. Emma, why don't you tell us what your character looks like? Yeah, so you see um, a tiefling with green skin and light green hair. Uh, and a singular kind of horn that is curving um, above their head. Standing, looking around, they have a long sword at their side, a blue cloak. Um, he's got like pieces of a giant cookie still left and he's currently like taking parts off of it and like popping it in his mouth and it causes him to laugh a little bit, but he's currently looking at a group of people who he was told that he's supposed to meet. Um, people that apparently he's drawn to for some reason that he doesn't quite understand, but that was explained to him that he is here um, to be a part of something with them. Um, so right now he's nervously just kind of like tapping his foot to some of the music that's kind of spreading throughout the carnival and uh, trying to work up some courage to go and speak to everyone. All right. Yeah. So, uh, as you are kind of hovering here, let me pull up the map so we can see where we are. You are currently standing close to the Dragonfly Rides. You have witnessed a commotion. Very recently, there were a number of dragonflies that shot up and they, one of them had an individual hanging off of them. Uh, one seemed almost as if to fall and you see this Aarakocra shoot up and catch them, detangle them from this saddle that was half half secured and they very gently bring them down and so as you're kind of approaching you can see that the group here is in a state of disarray a few of them are sopping wet you see Northwind the young treant that had greeted you when you first entered the carnival and you see Lavelli easing down this individual you spot an you spot a very burly, haha, <laughs> that's, why, that's why that's his name, I understand now. Uh, <laughs> you see a very stocky bugbear wearing dungarees and this jack-o'-lantern hat, helmet. And as they are moving through and they approach the group, you see that they are handing over the custody of someone that is wearing manacles. Burly begins to escort this kenku away from the group. And the others are gathering together here. So Arifus is not quite up to the group yet, but what is everyone doing and saying as you gather together in your various states of disarray? Rakaria uh, kind of is to the side a bit and picks up the hem of their dress that had been given to them by Riley and kind of wrings it out um, from the water, like gushing onto the ground. Um, and she takes a seat, still copying over a lot of the um, near, like all the damaged uh, like drawings and such from the one book that has been maintained for about an hour or so uh, into the rest of her books. 
um, she's looking very despondent having to do this, but she's sort of focused, but also not quite getting a lot of the details that are on the page and transferring them over. She's more stuck in her head in this moment. Okay, um, I think this is actually very, very appropriate. Last session, Calic had drawn the balance card. Calic had wrestled underwater and more or less pulled you up to the surface, and it came at a cost, a very physical cost. It was very taxing. And you also are quite taxed. You have drawn the balance card. So you lose half of your spell slots Oof. temporarily. You'll get them mm -hmm. back when you have a long rest, and you lose half of your hit points. I think most of my spell slots are gone anyway. Oh, okay. wait. So no. it, if you have spent less, uh, if you are under half, you go up to half. Oh. Yeah. I it's gained balanced. a spell slot back. Perfect and I okay. balanced. Yep, you're perfectly um, balanced. And sorry, you said half my hit points? Yes. Okay, cool. We have no a problem. criminal in the chat. Oh, all right. This last card goes to Mati. Thank you, Emma. How dare you, Emma? How dare you? The criminal. Had to do it. <laughs> all right, yeah. So, Kalik, you see Vicaria is quite worn down. Well, she'll need some time to uh, copy over what she has, and uh, we've seen most of the park at this point. Um, he's gonna, like, I assume there's like a stump or a log or something that he can just like sit down on. Yeah, absolutely. <clears throat> he's he's gonna uh, gonna plop down and pull out that uh, bottle of evening berry wine that uh that Lavelli got at the very beginning of the uh of the uh carnival it's and didn't like because there's no drink. alcohol <laughs> mm -hmm. it is non-alcoholic specifically uh but yeah he's he's gonna just take take a seat we'll be here a little bit he's gonna let himself dry off and enjoy his uh juice absolutely uh, you see Northwind, this very tall, very lanky uh, young treant. Here's this picture. You see Northwind kind of looming down over you, Kalik, and he, he gestures up to the leaves in, that make the boughs of his hair, and he says, Would you like me to fan you dry? That sounds uh chilling honestly uh, is that a no no um perhaps uh you could be of assistance to Ricaria though uh, a couple of the other books were slightly dampened oh um, right very well and you see him kind of like lean back up you hear the creaking of all of his different parts and he he wanders over to Ricaria and offers the exact same thing um and they look up at North Wind say um uh okay that's that's all right yeah yeah that thank you again you've been really you and Red have been very helpful very well and he just kind of waddles away, his big tree body, waddle, 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 and uh, begins to attend to some new people that are coming in, one of which is Erephus. Yeah, I think as the group is talking to Northwind and just like gathered around over there, um, Erephus looks back towards the like feasting orchard where he had met uh, Eloic mm -hmm. and uh, kind of takes a deep breath and then takes a large first step um, and then just kind of walks up to the group and try who would be on like the outskirts of the group right now. Mm. I 
think it would probably either be Lavelli or Chester. I think Ricaria and Kalik are kind of by the dock sitting, I, drying off. Last, last I remember, Chester was riding the dragonfly. Okay. okay so so he was the gone. only one who took the ride. <laughs> gotcha. I thought, I thought Kalik also took it. I had assumed we were back from that. We oh, are, Aaron. yeah. Oh, so are everything's we back pretty from much back, yeah. Okay, well then I'm with I'm with Kalik and like, I, don't know. I wasn't sure what timeline we were. Really. Mm -hmm. So everyone's gathered together. Multiverse storylines are always yeah, we really don't know, hard. We don't know where in the wild beyond the witchlight uh, cinematic <laughs> universe we are. <laughs> Not sure how far beyond. For the time stone. Um. So, Arathus will like take a step, uh, and walk a bit closer to Lavelli um, and kind of like bend a little uh, and look Lavelli and just try to get her attention. Uh, uh, Lavelli's head will like bird twitch to the side and then just stare at you sidelong. Um, hey, I, I was I was told like you all were my destiny or something. Um, she tilts her head slightly at that. <laughs> uh, there, there was a, a um a person that their their name was Eliwick. They they like bought my ticket. They they said that like I was I was supposed can, to meet you all. Can Kayla hear this from where he's sitting? And I, I, I know this is all really uh, weird. Um, okay. Kayla hears that he may be involved in destiny and immediately stands up and comes over. <laughs> oh, okay. Lavelli sees Kayla coming in on one side, the person talking to them on the other, just sort of like looks between them, glances at Erephus for a second longer, and then just says, This isn't worth it anymore, and steps out of the conversation. Uh, oh, okay. Um. <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> Just because this would be, this doesn't make any fucking sense, but it's going to be really fucking hilarious. This is so funny. <laughs> so, <laughs> Lavelli, as you step back, you feel a sudden surge of emotion, just intense emotion. It can be mm -hmm. any emotion you like. What do you want it to be? Mm -hmm. It also doesn't have to make sense. Uh, let's go with wonder. Okay, so you step back and you just are... <laughs> this sense of wonder, just it just blossoms inside of you. You feel this warmth and you feel this mirth. And as it explodes out, all of your clothes disintegrate. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> you have drawn the ruin card. Anything on your person that is not magical turns into bubbles. Which means the ball is gone. Yeah. <sighs> and, and she's still under a wondrous emotion out of this. It's up to you. You can make it... You, if you want to continue role-playing it, that's fine. Or if you want it to disappear as you lose your clothes, that's fine, too. Um, so, I think it just, like, builds up and then into a sudden exhale and gasp and then she just looks around very confused before noticing bubbles and then eventually that uh she is just a bare feathered lady i i have to admit i love the fact that erifus's introduction is <laughs> oh this isn't worth it anymore boom <laughs> um, uh Arfus will uh, grab his cloak and kind of move quickly and just like put it around Lavelli. Uh, that that was um that that was a trick. Um, maybe I I mean you're you're uh, feathered, but maybe it's not best to not wear uh, clothes around um, all the children. That wasn't you, was it? No, no, I I can't do anything like that. I can see what I have in my disguise kit if you'd like to, Valley. She shoots him a look. I'm Is not ruling out that this what? isn't your fault. I, I think 
I'm looking around, are there any stalls that like sell shirts that say like, I love witch light carnival or anything like that? Yeah, absolutely. There I'm are a number of saying. small stalls just kind of intermittently placed between all of the rides and all of that. So you've seen a few on your way here, absolutely. I don't, I don't have much uh, money or anything, but I, I can, we can get you some clothes or something if, if you, uh, if you want some, just like t temporarily, you, you know. She just sighs at that, puts a talent hand to her forehead and shakes it. No, I don't need much. It's more of what I lost that upsets me. Oh, okay. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry about that. Uh, you can, you can hold on to the cloak for now. Delete, 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 delete. <laughs> Perhaps you can find some supplies over at the lost property. Delete my short sword. Delete um, my darts. <laughs> yeah. So, <laughs> sorry, but um, this is a really weird moment. But um, I'm Araf. I'm Arafis. Uh, who who are you all? I'm. I'm Kayla Gilvari. You've heard of my parents, probably. No. Kelvin and Jessius. <laughs> Great adventurers. I didn't even let you give their names. I'm not I'm not really uh, from the area, so Ah, oh, well you must come visit it in Chandel. He's got a grand manor. Uh I sure. Um yeah, that 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 sounds fine. I I'm just, I'm kind of stuck on the whole you all are my destiny thing. I'm trying to figure... Well, let's be fair. I'm probably a lot of people's destiny. Well, it, it was more of a like all four of you were. Eh, you know. I just... Party dynamics. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah. Um, who, who's everyone else? And I know like Maybe Chester and um, uh, Ricaria are a bit further away, still dealing with stuff, but specifically <laughs> trying to get Lavelli. <laughs> yeah. uh, Lavelli looks at this uh, increasingly awkward conversation that is somehow less awkward with the mostly naked bird woman. <laughs> and she'll tilt her head towards uh, Arifis. Well, I'm just a uh, wandering seafarer, if you will. I didn't know you sailed La Valley. Have you asked? Well, we haven't really had much time to chat about ourselves, have we? Oh, you've had plenty of time to chat about yourself. Well, you have to make the time for the important things. <laughs> okay, um... <laughs> Well, uh, Miss Seafair, do, do you have a name? Or do you just want me to call you Seafair? Because I can, I can do that. I just My name, and she reaches up to grab a <laughs> this is hat that no longer exists. Uh, and steamrolls over Calix dialogue, saying, <laughs> my name is Lavelli. <laughs> Lavelli, uh, nice, nice to meet you. Um... Yeah, so as this conversation's going on, Rick, Caria, and Chester, you see that Lavelli and Kalik are talking to somebody new. You have never seen this person before. Also, Lavelli is wearing nothing but a cloak. Uh, what's going on over there? Clothes exploded, new person showed up. Rick kind of turns around. Um... Hi, I'm Arifus. Oh! Hello. <laughs> and Ricaria scrambles to their feet and is like, oh, hi. Hi. Hello. Um, Lavelli! Oh, sorry. Hi, I'm Ricaria. Sorry. Lavelli! Uh, you're close. Nice to meet you. Sorry. Hi. Hi. I like your horn. Oh, yeah. Do you like mine? Oh, yeah. They're, yeah, they're, I like the flowers. Thanks. Um, I did them myself. It's really nice. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, Lavelli and they come over and they take one of the flowers off um, their head kind of uh, and taking some of the vines and 
trimming them off and they say, um, one, one sec, it's not going to be as good, but I'm going to try. And I'm going to use Druid craft to basically make them a new hat out of vines and a little flower on the side. Oh, oh I love Aww. that. And they hand it to Lavelle and say, here, um, I can try and make you clothes out of flowers. It's not going to be very maneuverable though. And it's going to take a while. She'll, uh, grasp the brim of the hat between her talons and put it on and tilt it forward a bit and say this is enough thank you no problem yes and uh if you do need any clothes let me know i can i it may take me a minute but i can design you some stuff if you desire oh and that's chester oh yes i am chester hi uh, sorry this is a really awkward moment uh, yes. not really the best time for me to kind of walk in since friend immediately after lost all their clothes but um do we want to try to help her with that we can ignore me for a minute well the valley actually makes very good points um most of us uh, with the exception of myself and Rukaria, we only met a few hours ago actually on the road um yes and Rikaria was going to be working on uh, repairing some some notes, some field notes of hers. Uh, we'll need to have some time for that, especially since we are on a bit of a clock for the prestidigitation. Um, perhaps we could get Lavelli some new threads and find somewhere to sit and get to know each other because we don't know a lot about one another's backgrounds. And we need some downtime anyways. That, that's, a, that's a good idea. Um, Glad to hear I'm yeah. not as much a stranger as I, I, th I thought I'd be. Uh, I thought all of you would be really well acquainted, but y yeah, that, that sounds nice. So wait, Destiny what? Destiny starts somewhere. So why? I mean, I'm, I'm not saying, I mean, like, welcome to the friendship circle, but, um... Oh, I'm what? I'm in the friendship circle. Okay, we're in, our, cool. we're in uh -huh. a circle. I like points around Thanks. like we're in a circle. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we're all standing I mean, you're, around. You're here now. Oh, this is Sir Lancelot, by the way. It's my snake. Um, nice to meet circle. you. It like sticks its tongue out at you to smell you. Um, I was like, um, I forgot what I was going to say. I like... <laughs> they like look to you. Their cheeks flush. They look to Lavelli. Their cheeks flush more and say, we should go. I'm very damp. Because I fell in the water. Uh, <laughs> because I okay. fell in the water. Yeah. Well, if if you um, think of your question again, feel free to ask. But mm -hmm. let's let's go. Um, you yeah. said there was like a lost property. Maybe they have something. Excellent. Mm. We can find some pants there. For so me. as the group of you are kind of moving along, uh, Erethus. How do you feel about how this first contact went? What is going on through your mind right now? I feel very awkward. I feel like I uh, maybe it's my fault that the bird lost all their stuff. I don't really know. I don't understand what's happening. Um, okay. Okay. Um, yeah. So. Wow. I'm relegated to the bird. The bird. <laughs> <laughs> so. So as this kind of like uncertainty wells up in your gut, uh, you also get a sense of hypervigilance. You are trying to be careful here. You are being very wary and very conscious of these people. And as you are moving together as a group, you look over them and you feel that perhaps this will be a little easier than you originally thought. They aren't being abrasive. They aren't being standoffish. Even though it's a little weird, it seems okay. And that okayness gives you just a tiny boost of confidence. You have drawn the star card. You can increase one ability score by one. Yay. All right. So as you're kind of moving along, you do have a few options here. Uh, you can head over to one of the small stalls where you see there's some merchandise, or you can head over to Lost Property. Where would you like to go? I think we should go. I, I like the idea of going to Lost Property so you can find some, some clothes for you, Lavelli. Somewhere uh, in the last. I 
do not uh, wish to return there. Why? She glances to where her pack should have been. Did Lavelle ever tell us that she got the ball? No, we we didn't meet up until after all the big Yeah, and then we didn't yep. talk about it at all. Yep. It's like, no oh. one knows. Well, maybe like the magic, like maybe whatever happened, it went there. <gasps> maybe my clothes. Wait, no, I lost them before I came here. Never mind. Do you, um, I can go talk to them, um, see if they have anything. What are you, um, size small? How tall is Erephus? Uh, they're about five oh. seven. Okay. Lavelli is five two. Oh, so Lavelli looks up at you. Baby bird. <laughs> Baby bird. <doo> -doo. <laughs> I'm glad that my instinctual response, which would have been to say 5 2, was also the right response. Nice. <laughs> That's what I wrote down. Uh, and she says, Yes. In a, sort <laughs> in a slightly annoyed tone. Okay. Okay. Um, I'll. He kind of like points behind him. I'll I'll go uh, I'll go talk to them and see. Um, okay. I, I'll I'll be back. Okay. And they go and walk off. Hi. Does anyone join Arifis? I think Rick will join Arifis. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm just gonna go walk. What? Ricardo doesn't want to stay around the naked bird. I mean, there's so many options. <laughs> <laughs> I'm I'm gonna take a, a guess and and let the two of them go off on their own. Okay. Because Ricario is my friend. <laughs> gotcha. All right. So we have Erethus and we have Ricario over here, and we'll have a group of you just kind of chilling here in the middle. What does Chester want to do? Yeah. What does Chester want to do? Do you want to go with them? Do you want to um... stay with Rick? Uh, sorry, Lavelli and Kalik. Um, I think Chester kind of has a sense feeling just over the last couple hours. There seems to be a tension between the two, uh, two between Lavelli and Kalik. So I think he kind of wants to stick around with them to make sure that nothing happens between the two of them. Okay. Try to maybe prevent some kind of possible, you know, bird feathers going into somebody's face, you know. All right, so we'll start off with the three of you. So you see Erephus and Ricaria walk away, and you're kind of standing here in the main thoroughfare. People are walking by. You see that there is an elf on these very, very long stilts, and they are currently munching on a pear as they precariously pick their way past you. What would you like to do as a group? Lavelli crosses her arms and turns halfway towards Kaelic. The seafarer, right? What is it you want, Kaelic? Fairy wants to know my name. No. Why do you do this? I'm not sure what you mean by this. You call yourself an adventurer and yet so far, all you've done is name drop your parents. Mm. Do you not have accomplishments of your own that people could have heard? I've only set out on my adventure recently. Haven't had much time to do much of anything. And you figure the best start to your journey is to have everyone to compare you to your betters? No. To remind people that I come from good stock that I have hero's blood with me. Tries narrow a bit at that. So you think that because your parents are great and good, that you will also be great and good, therefore everyone should know that you're great and good? People start with certain advantages sometimes. I'm not going to lie about that. Besides, sometimes when you know someone, it can get your foot in the door. And sometimes it can lead to unfulfilled expectations. Uh, uh, I would say it's who you. I would say it's who you know. 
just from my own experience here. But yes. Chester, mm -hmm. as you're kind of standing between the two of them and you're actively staying here to try to de-escalate things, and this very mm -hmm. curious, very interesting conversation is coming up, you feel a, you feel a, a small small thrum of power. You don't know if maybe it's because the vibes here in the carnival are high. You can hear laughter. All of the lights here are super vibrant. Everyone's having a good time. But this particular conversation that you're having is a little tense. And in this tension, you hear a very soft jingling of bells. You can't quite tell where it's coming from. But the power you do feel. You have drawn the moon card. What are you Same. wishing for right now? Man, I had the perfect wish for this, and I can't even do it. Um, the Why one not? time I, because I don't, I didn't know that Lavilli lost the the thing, or I would wish it back. You can do <laughs> that if you want. Can I? You can I did, do. I, you can wish for anything. Okay, because I thought that she hadn't told the group that she'd had the. Well, I guess, you know what? No, no, no. I could just rephrase. It doesn't have to be I, Chester I... who wishes. It can be you who wishes. Oh, okay. I, I always think in character. That's probably it's a, my it, own. Whatever you want. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, you know what? I'm just going to go with this because it'll work for me and it'll work for Chester. He'll know that there's been something like off with Lavelli, especially ever since she lost her bag. So, Chester's just going to wish. I wish there was a way we could find out where this bag was. And I know that they're going off to the Lost and Found to find it. But like my my his thought is like, man, <clears throat> is there a way we could really find this bag? I really hope maybe it's the lost and found is and he looks up to the sky, like, is there any way we could find this? You look and up says, to the sky and suddenly it gets dark. There's a rush of leaves that cover over you, and you realize Northwind is standing behind you, and he looms oh. over you, looks down. Oh. There's a creaking of wood, and he says, Hello, Chester. My good my friend. Hello, my friend, Northwind. I believe one of you has lost this. He pulls up a backpack. It is Lavelli's backpack. That looks like Lavelli's backpack. My wish has come true. How did... Oh, the ma I don't understand magic sometimes, but I love it so much. And he'll, he'll take it and he'll hand it to Lavelli. I believe this is your backpack, isn't it? Lavelli pauses right before she looks like she was about to yell something at Kalik, and mid gesture pointing at him turns towards Chester and looks at the backpack before grabbing it and cradling it in both arms. Oh, lovely! Oh, Northman, I don't know how you found that, but thank you. You've you've brought happiness like you always do. You see a twinkle in Northwind's eyes and his. His twiggy arms come down and very delicately correct your hat. It's slightly crooked. And he ruffles the feather a little and he says, I can see a lot from up here. <laughs> and then the, the leaves rustle. She uh, lowers her head protectively over the bag and just whispers, Thank you. Pally. Would you recommend, if I have an advantage, like my association with my parents, that I should just not use it? She takes a deep breath and with the source of her turmoil return, exhales and her shoulders slump a bit. It's not who you are or where you came from that I that concerns me. She locks eyes with him for a moment. You consider yourself the leader of this band, do you not? I would not say so. I would say that from what we've seen thus far, I perhaps have more experience. Certainly, I showed myself well in the fight against the giant toad, but I don't know if I would say that I am the team's leader. But if you anything, wish to be. not sure that that's a responsibility I particularly desire. 
Wait. <clears throat> if anything, I would argue that the group as a whole has shown considerable care for Rikaria. She sighs again. Then I just have one question for you. And she gestures one arm towards Chester and where the others went. What is your goal in this and us? I, for myself, would like to make a name for myself, one that is not dependent on my parents. Frankly, they expect it of me. I believe that our group has done good work here tonight. And if you would continue adventuring with me, I think we can do great things. If uh, if we can work together and become a party of renown, that would make me greatly pleased. She uh, she takes another deep breath and puts a taloned hand on his shoulder. It's a loose and gentle grip. Just remember two things. One, the goal you follow, it will affect everyone else. Remember that as a group, whether we want it or not, we'll follow the same dreams. And two, she stares deep into his eye for a moment. It does not matter if you wish to use your name to get some advantage, but remember when you invoke someone else for their resources, you're also giving them your credit. I'm aware. She lets go and reaches into the uh, bag and slowly pulls out the uh, ball that Durla had given her. Yeah, so as Lavelli pulls out this ball, you see this, this sphere of silver. It almost looks like it's made out of mirrors, just mirrored silvered glass. And it's about the size of a grapefruit. And as Lavelli pulls it out and presents it to the group, we will cut over to Ricaria and Erethus. As you're coming up, to lost property here. Um, <clears throat> Erephus, you see, perhaps for the first time, Erlegron. You see this very regal looking beast, feline and mostly in nature with three pairs of legs. Counting, yeah, three. <laughs> um, and you see these large tendrils just dark and swirling up over their head and there are these butterfly wings that have been broken down and repaired probably a dozen times that just fan out behind them and they are currently not tending to anyone they are currently just lounging in a in a half circle just looking idly as people pass by as you approach Durla looks over Erethus and straight to Ricaria and says hello my friend welcome back hi Durla Grand um a question uh did has anything new come into the lost and found um Lavelli uh lost all all her clothes and all her stuff. And just wondering if it might have shown up here? It was really recently. Hmm. You see his big boxy head turn to look at this very, very uh, austere looking wagon where it's been opened up and there's a number of trunks that are open on the inside. And he says, well, things have a way of finding their way into lost property. You may, of course, have a gander. Okay. Um, question also. Um, do th is there... Mm, if no one's claimed them and there's clothes in there, can I take them? 
I would say you can take whatever you like so long as you do not exercise greed. Oh, okay. Thank you. Perhaps, and as you're kind of like, I imagine as soon as you say thank you, you're kind of like already yeah. making your way over. Exactly. A- yeah, as, as soon as you begin to move, he says, but ah. I would suggest reaching further down into the boxes. More likely that they have been abandoned the further down they are. How, how deep the boxes? It depends. How long is your reach? Uh, Ricaria looks to Erephus and says, "You want to hold my ankles?" <laughs> uh, um, I, I'm, I mean, we can way. we can probably just reach down there. Oh, okay. we'll I've we'll been... we'll be fine. Uh, thank okay. you. And... Ricaria is gonna play dress up with Lavelli, isn't she? <laughs> <laughs> Yay, dress up. Arifes is going to go in there and start looking around for clothes that might be suitable for Lavelli. Merc will do the same, but also looking for clothes for themselves. Okay, excellent. Yeah, so we're going to have this montage of y'all digging in. And as you do, Arifes, as you're picking through the boxes here. One of your eight cards. One of your eight cards activates. Uh, none of these songs are going to be appropriate. Oh, God. Hold on. Nope. Nope. <laughs> oh, it is a cursed sword. <laughs> okay, perfect. All right, Careful what um, you grab. <laughs> uh, so as you are reaching into these boxes, you're pulling out quite a bit of stuff. And this is making you think of another time another place, perhaps another life, you remember a feeling of scarcity that while these boxes, these treasure chests full of functional, mostly well-kept things, this sort of luxury was not always afforded for some people. You have drawn the Ural card. So for a moment, the camera fades to black, and we see something else. We go back in time, and Erephus shares a memory. What do we see? As Erephus is digging through these boxes and reaching down deep, his mind wanders, and... A memory comes to light that he has long since forgotten about. Darkness kind of surrounds him in this moment and scenery of a bustling city um, springs to life around him as he grows smaller and smaller and until he is a little kid again. He's digging through the trash of a dumpster with some friends looking for anything possibly valuable or interesting. Um, He reaches down and finds some nice silks from just this discarded robe that one of the wealthy families threw away. He picks it up, light, bright in his eyes in excitement um, and he turns to show his friends one of them a dragonborn is peeking around the corner and uh, as Erephus look tor- looks towards him to show what he found the dragonborn is laughing saying the guards are coming the guards are coming and uh, He jumps down from the dumpster along with a couple of his other friends, two halflings, and the four of them run off in the alley, um, quickly followed by a guard kind of turning the corner. Hey, what are you kids doing? And the four of them just laughing. 
until they disappear in the streets of Chendal. And as they disappear, the memory poof, swirls with smoke. And as you blink the vision away, you realize you're holding in your hand silk. It's not the same shade. It's definitely a different garment. But it feels the same. It has the same weight. The same luxury to it. And you're holding this very beautiful thing in your hands. As I do, an intense pain racks my brain. I grip tightly onto the silk and crunch or crouch over uh, the box that I'm in front of. Are you okay? Rick kind of turns around their arms like before elbow deep in another box. Hey, are you okay? <sighs> uh, he almost violently throws the silk down back into the box, turning away from it and stepping away. Uh, uh, no, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll be, you keep, you keep looking. I'll be back. Uh, okay. And he goes to step outside uh, to try to get fresh air. Okay. So, Ricaria, as you see Erephus step out, the silk is abandoned on the top of this box that he was going through. You look at it. You pick it up. You unfurl it to have a very good look. This is a very, very nice cloak. You see that it is sky blue in color and it has a silver thread embroidered along the rim of it. And it trails back into a V shape, almost like a bridal, uh, bridal veil. You see that there is a very intricate clasp here at the throat, and it appears to be two moons that interlock together. I think Rick will kind of look at this, a bit confused as to why Erephus like left it. Um, and they'll take it and kind of spin it around and drape it over their shoulders and click it together, uh, the two moons intertwining. And they just start like kind of feeling the fabric. This is really nice. Okay. Yeah, so You're as, now. <clears throat> as yeah. you put it on, um, you feel this sort of soft warmth washing over you. You can add a cloak of protection to your inventory. Yes. You have to draw the key card. Yes. And you said it has like a little hood? Yes. So they'll like kind of put the hood up. Um, they'll look for like anything else that might fit on Lavelli um, before kind of gathering up what clothes and such. Not probably not being able to find their bag at all after yeah. searching. So we'll have a little montage here of Rick just diving into the box and you just see literally things, like being flown everywhere. Essentially, you can find whatever you want and you can literally invent whatever outfit you want to put Lavelli oh God, in. No. Oh, amazing. So, oh, Ricardo. No. So, no, 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 wait, not yet, not yet, not yet. Oh. Um, so, uh, you bundle together a bunch of stuff, right? And you absolutely don't find any backpack or anything like that. You don't find anything that looks like it was Lavelli's. And uh, so you can exit the wagon and you have the stuff. You don't have to describe it quite yet. Yeah, they come out with uh, a bunch of clothes kind of in their arms and still wearing the, the silken cloak. Um, they like come out and they look over, uh, look towards where Arifus might be, uh, see if they're still around. Yeah, Arifus is just outside, kind of, he was initially taking deep, like heavy breaths, trying to calm down uh, and get past this pain. But now he's probably calmed down uh, is still like leaning it against the box just kind of for support. But um, he looks towards you. Uh, he's obviously still in a little bit of pain, um, but is past the worst of it. Hey, did, sorry, sorry about that. Did you find anything? 
yeah, yeah. Um, I found I found a bunch of stuff. I, I kind of I, I assembled what what I thought uh, was what what might fit Labelli. We'll see. We'll see. We'll do like a little fashion show. We'll see if it like a little fashion show thing. See what they like, what she likes. Um, because I don't really know her style that well, and I want to make sure that she's she's comfortable. Are you oh okay? Do you need? Uh, no, I'm still in some pain. I, oh, I'll be I'll be okay. I just um. I get these uh, he- headaches sometimes. It's it's all right. Okay. Um. Can you hold out your arms for me for a moment? Okay. Um. As they do, they're gonna just dump all the clothes into Arifus's arms <laughs> and say, "One, one moment, one moment." And they reach up to their their horns, and they cast. Um. You see, like a uh, magic kind of leave their fingers, almost like little vines that extend from the tips of them. Uh, intertwining with the various flowers and such and you see like a little sprig start to grow and these little berries start to form on the outside they're like little kind of blueberries that are there and she picks one off um then picks two more and says i know your hands are full either we can swap and you can take these and they'll make you feel better or i can feed them to you whatever you want to do um we, we can we can swap oh. uh, thank you I, I really appreciate it and I'll give you back the clothes and take some of these berries and Thanks. just toss them in my mouth <laughs> and they're good berries what do they taste like um so as as Arifus eats them I will say what is Arifus's favorite fruit Gra- normal grapes. <laughs> they taste like probably the best grapes that Arifus has ever eaten. And you feel a little bit more whole. These little so okay. Grapes. Um as you're as you're eating these fucking fantastic grapes, uh you know how like when you're parched and you have a really juicy fruit and it's just like a kick to the head you you feel the sugar enter your bloodstream right you just feel that shot of energy and you feel your taste buds exploding these are the most delicious thing that you have ever put in your mouth (laughs) god go on keep describing it <laughs> was that the sound of your brain shorting up? Thank you, everybody, for the gift. Yeah. Okay, oh, I was for the gift. I was, I was trying to keep face the here. gift grapes. Thank you so much for the gift grapes, y'all. Thank you, thank you. I'm gonna cry. Um, so many grapes. You, you drew the vizier card. The grapes are so fucking good that you you can ask the gods any one question and get one answer. What do you it's want? It's so know? fucking good. It's so, so fucking, fucking good. good. That's a good berry. <laughs> Why am I here? <laughs> okay, is that is that really your question? <laughs> That's my question. Okay, okay, okay. So as as you are eating these berries and you're wondering why am I here? God, uh, the why are any of us here? The camera you know, zooms out life? and you see like six people sitting around a table throwing some dice. You know, um. Oh, no. <laughs> you ask why am I here? Um you you get this feeling of not being quite yourself. It's almost as if one of those days where you wake up and there's that sense that there's something wrong. I might be sick today or I might need to take it a little easier today. I'm not my full self. And that feeling is sort of amplified here in this moment as you wonder why am I here as you're eating these grapes but you get this sense of destiny again it's compounded now as you think about Eliwick and you look at Ricaria and for a split second you see a vision of a different place a different time you see Ricaria in a swamp It's a swamp you've never been in before. And you see these giant mushrooms in the background. You see these strange bubbles just rising up from the ground. These viscous tar-like bubbles. It is a place of, of strangeness, a place of discomfort. 
But you see Ricaria with all of their flowers, all of their brightness, and perceiving them in this way, you get the sense that you are going where you're supposed to. You see that this is part of a path that you've been put on. Thank, thank you. Uh, these really help. Yeah, I kind of spaced out there for a second. Yeah, so, sorry about <laughs> That's that. That's okay. It's all right. Um, they usually do that sometimes. These are uh, re really good. I feel weird eating something that grew off of you, but um, um, well, it's not really me. It's it's like there's I, I curate different plants and stuff. Um, my dad uh, used to grow. We had this really big garden um, that we used to grow that had a lot of like really cool herbs and plants in them, and we also had, like a little a little farm. Um, oh, were were your family farmers? Well, my dad kind of became a farmer uh, after he retired. Um, my, my mom is, you know, I've never really talked to a lot of other tieflings, I gotta say. It's, it's really exciting for me, to be honest. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, what, what did your, what, what did your dad do oh, he's before he retired? Uh, that's actually how, um, that's how Kaelic and I met, actually. Um, we, uh, our parents adventured together. And my dad adventured with them, and yeah. Oh, that's that's cool. Um, <laughs> I well, I don't do like typical farming or anything. Um, I, me and my family have a, a silk farm that oh, we did too. That's cool. Yeah. Uh, did Did you grow up with other? Did you have a, any siblings? Did you, did you like grow up with other tieflings? I had, uh, I have two younger siblings, yeah, but, um, oh. I, I've got my wife and I've got two kids now, so we, wow, we, and looking at Arifus, he's pretty young, um, he's about maybe like 19, 20, mm -hmm. so that's especially perhaps surprising to you but uh, he just kind of keeps going. It's like, yeah, so we just kind of um, keep to ourselves and take okay. care of the farm and everything. And yeah. Uh, are, you, are you, hmm, and they think about it for a moment. They look up to RFS and say, are you? Uh, you know, that's a personal question. Maybe we can talk about it later once I'm finished. Ooh. Goodbye lights. Um, maybe once I'm finished drawing things, um, we can, we can talk about things. Okay. Cause I, we, we need to get these to Olive Valley. Cause I think new. as you are, uh, having this conversation, you're actually walking together in the direction that, uh, the other group is. So we'll kind of fade to black there and go back to Lavelli, Calic, and Chester. Lavelli has produced this mirrored orb. Oh, what is that? This is the ball of Durla's child. Oh. They gave it to me in hopes that I perhaps on our trip we could find them. Oh. oh. Is that why you were upset about the bag? She's silent, but you can tell that you're right. I would be too. Okay. <clears throat> um. Well, we have it now. We're it's, it's secure now. Hopefully. Um. Wow. That's. I'm. Kind of happy that they uh felt they could trust us with that. Trust you with that anyway. Um. I, I'm kind of speechless at it, honestly. And he I just keeps looking at. I hope it. to not disappoint them. Yeah. As you say that, you see Ricaria and Erephus are slowly making their way up the thoroughfare in your direction. Erephus has a bundle of stuff in his arms. That's how we kill the oh. giant toad. 
Oh my, thank God Kaylee didn't go to get the clothes. <laughs> <laughs> no, no fashion sense Kaylee. Like yeah. Clothes. Whoa. Wait, is that what you call me? That was out of character. That was in character now. <laughs> oh, okay. Hi, we've got you clothes. Yeah, oh, you, what we, uh, what we, you have you some stuff to choose from. Oh, we got, we got like at least three different outfits, Lavelli. I didn't know exactly what you liked, but I grabbed a lot of red. And so... I think that you should do a fashion show for us if you want to. I think it's a good idea. She takes like a glance at the clothes. Uh, <laughs> how, how would you describe these outfits, Ricaria? So it's very mix and match. A lot of it's like reds and whites. Um, very much, it seems like Ricaria definitely took stock of what Lavelli had been wearing. Um, very much getting the same tones that Lavelli, that Ricaria assumes that Lavelli likes based on what they wear. Um, speaking of which, I actually have to look at your characters so I can describe it better. Um, yeah, it's like, there's some like golds in there. There's some reds. There's also some like uh, various white stripes and such. There's one that it's just like, it's very much like a carnival outfit. So it's like red, white, red, white striped suit jacket. Um, and she's like, I just got that for fun. Um, one of them's a dress, one of them's like a suit, and the other one's more of like, kind of like a free-flowing cloak, more or less. I think they should have room for your wings. If not, we can rip them and fix them. Chester, you're good at that, right? You fixing? I can try my best, yeah. Okay, so pick what you want. She'll uh, glance through the different outfits picking up the dress first to see what it looks like? I would say it's a very conservative dress um, with very like minimal embroidery in it. Uh, that's like very subtle hints of gold um, throughout probably with, we'll say a lion motif that's uh, kind of embroidered in there. Probably someone um, Maybe someone who got in trouble with the carnival a while ago, some noble person that thought they were too good to get a ticket might have disappeared. We don't know. Might have been theirs. Very expensive. Very, very soft. Mm -hmm. Kalik, uh, as these uh -oh. items are being like kind of distributed and passed over and surveyed, uh, something falls out of the bundle of clothes. And it lands with such a soft thud that nobody else seems to notice it, but it catches your eye. As you stoop down to pick it up, you find a key. This key, instead of having teeth at the end where you would insert it into a lock, it's a question mark. Interesting. It's a keyblade. <laughs> no, it's not. But yeah. you have drawn the sun card and you can add a mystery key to your inventory. A question mark is worked into the head of this key. This key has a 5% chance of unlocking any lock it's inserted into. Once it unlocks something, the key disappears. Alrighty. Ooh. I'm, I'm going to try that everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> That's going to be first... <laughs> First yeah. come, first serve. <laughs> so it's gonna it's gonna be the two things Kalik always does. He's just gonna combine them. He's gonna go up to a door, stick the key in, and try it, and goes, "Hey, Locke, have you heard about my parents?" <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> oh my god! Your parents' names really open doors, huh? That's, wow! That's, the, that's it. That's, that's, that's it. You know game, what? Game that's it. The game's canceled. You know what? <laughs> it's it's fine. Actually, this will be a good it's... time for us to take a break. Oh. Yeah. So 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 tell me how you so you pick up this key. How does Kalik respond? Um. Does he recognize it for the utility that it has? Uh, roll me an Arcana or History check. Um... Let's see if you've come across one of these before. They are the same, so I'm just going to go with Arcana. Okay, 16. Yeah, absolutely. I think you've heard of these. Perhaps you haven't seen one in person, but absolutely. These come across 
Uh, they're they're quite common as far as very gently, lightly magical items go. So, um, Caitlin, uh, you know, he's when, when he's picking all of his supplies and whatnot, he was obviously thinking about adventuring when he did it. So he's, his pack has those straps that have the little tiny pockets on the front. So he just like slips it in one of those. So it's like easily accessible, but it's also like securely stored away. And he just like slips it in there. Doesn't really bother mentioning it to the rest of the group because he'll be there when it's needed, probably. Excellent. Yeah, so we see this flurry of clothes and fabric just flying everywhere and Lavelli kind of like being shrouded and unshrouded and feathers falling loose and going here and there. And that is where we're going to take our break as Lavelli does a small little uh, fashion show there. We're going to be back in about five minutes. Please grab some water, grab some snacks, do a little stretch, and we'll be back soon. So as the clothes are finally settled... As the clothes are now on, not off. Yeah, so uh, opposite direction. As the clothes are finally settled, what does Lavelli look like now? How, um, for the suit, Rakaria, mm -hmm. like how much freedom of movement was there? I would say Lavelli's small, so this was definitely fit for a bigger frame. Mm -hmm. Um, most likely is one of the like it may it kind of looks like something that Mr. Burley suit light. Mr. Witch. No, is... Mr. Light. Oh, okay. Um, it kind of looks like something Mr. Light would wear, except because they have the horizontal stripes, it would be like the, the vertical ones instead. Nope. Horizontal stripes instead of the vertical ones. So there I we think, go. I think what Lavelli does is she takes the dress and then like cuts the top half of the cloak on to wear that over like a little bolero oh. mm -hmm. i love it cute all right lavelli you are no longer naked congratulations hell yeah you look nice i mean you looked nice before you look nice now too so I will say that uh, for the purposes of just running around and doing all of these things and the various conversations that we have had, the timer will go up. You realize that it is starting to get a little bright out. As you're looking around, the night had start with the twilight of darkness all around you. You can see that there are streaks of orange slowly beginning to bleed into the sky. You see the stars pepper them little pinpoints of light sparkling above you. Perhaps we should rest for a bit before we go on the last rides. Yeah, yeah. I think well, I, I was still interested in the whole um, getting to know everybody sit down. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we can we can do that while we rest. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, so there are a couple of places as you kind of unfurl your map here. Whoosh, you see that <laughs> props, props, props. Uh, as you're kind of looking around, you do have a couple of places that you could go. You could go to the feasting orchard again if you like. Uh, you can see that there is a number of walkways and benches all throughout the area you can see that uh the gondola swans seem large enough as they're kind of like drifting by on these rivers by you that uh, they are large enough to hold the entire party all on one um hmm. so you have a couple of different options here if you want to go somewhere a little more quiet and private you can hear the music and the festivities going on in the feaching Feasting Orchard. What do you want to do? If the gondola swans will fit everybody, I mean, take a ride around the entire park, get to uh, have at least a little bit of privacy. Uh, <clears throat> true. Um, we should go there. I, I would. I'm down for that. Oh, this would be so nice. Yeah, yeah, that that works. Isn't that a little romantic? Only if you want it to be. So yeah, it doesn't to have to be romantic. It's not like we're going down a tunnel that has a lot of hearts that I can remember. 
Are we just like all gonna kiss or something if we're there? I mean, I, I think he starts if it was to blush like... and get a little nervous. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean... I think if it was like uh, just like two people, then it's a little romantic, yeah. But with, with a group, it, it should be fine. Yeah, it's a big group of people, not just two. Everyone just starts nervously sweating as they're like, "Oh no, is this <laughs> too romantic?" Is not sweating at all. <laughs> Lavelle La- La- gives out a big. I was gonna say. I, I saw that look of two people. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> you think it can't be romantic in a group? You have been on a ship. Oh, you've been on a ship before? Oh, many. <gasps> well, we can put that in. We can we can put that. We can talk about that on the swan. Okay, so everyone starts making their way over to okay. the gondola swans. As you do. I should have prepared more music. It's romantic Uh-oh. music, that's all. Just get the sound of swans honking. They've been swishing. I have I have double polka. Perfect. So romantic. That's so romantic. Doesn't They'd that just make you want to just grab someone's face yeah. and smooch them? Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right, perfect. Okay. Just grab Burkaria by the horns and give her a kiss. Enormous swans glide through the water here, pulling ornate wooden gondolas draped in flowers. The swans disappear into banks of silver mist as they wend their way down the river. A jetty extends ahead at the head, which a waiting swan preens its feathers. As you're approaching the uh, lakeside here on the northern part, you see that there is a giant swan waiting for the next group of people. You see that there is a a box attached to the back of it. Uh, this this gondola seems to be able to sit at least eight people, so it is quite large. And this swan is also very quite large. As you approach, the swan looks to you and bows their head. Good evening. My name is Featherine. Would you like to take a ride? Yes, please, Featherine. I didn't realize the swans talked. Everything swans talks. Talk. Do swans not talk? Oh, you'll find that many people here all throughout the carnival are capable of speech and eloquence and conversation. The way that she says conversation seems very loaded. For some reason, you can't quite really pin it, but you feel like, uh, hmm, you might be set up for something here. Lavelli gives a look right at Ricaria that you can instantly translate to saying, this isn't going to be romantic. Um, I'm so excited. I know you all said you wanted a little bit of privacy. I don't know if this is what you were expecting. Is Do you still want to have our conversation here why not i'm just i'm just asking sorry still seems like more privacy than say sitting at the feasting orchard Mm -hmm. oh if you need me to mind my own beak i can of course and you see her kind of ruffling her feathers a bit it's okay um we're just doing like a get to know you thing like um... oh fantastic I could be a mediator or a moderator of your conversation if you like. You can take the minutes, that'd be great. Oh yes, I don't know what that means, but please hop on. And you see her kind of do like a little hip waggle and then just like a little (laughs) platform comes down and it's a set of steps that go from the dock onto the gondola. What just happened? Okay, we're fine. Sorry, the way you said hop on, I immediately thought of Miss Frizzle. <laughs> Magic school duck. <laughs> the swan just suddenly grows these brilliant orange curls. It's inexplicable. About to ride inside a bloodstream. Let's go. All right. Oh, all right. Um. <clears throat> yeah. Do we have to give our tickets to anyone? Oh, yes. Please present your tickets. Here. And you see her very delicately come forward and give each one a little nip. So instead of like the little hole punch that you've been getting, the 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 giant swan just eats a part of your ticket. 
Oh, huh. Lavelli hesitantly and slowly holds out her t- her backup ticket. <laughs> no, she se- she seems to be very very good at this. She takes precisely just one bit of it and not any less or any more. Oh, oh give we're my gonna regret to this. You. Okay. Yep. So make sure everyone marks one punch. One punch, man. Yep. Say Tyler, let's go. All right. Cool. And you begin to climb on. As you do, very slowly, she begins to make her way through the water. And you can hear the water gently rippling against the gondola. And it is not rushed. And she begins to head downstream. As you sit down, it will essentially be two benches facing each other. Who is sitting next to who? Wait, who's the first person on? Ricaria. Oh, Chester. Okay, we both yeah. want at the same time. So, Ricaria yeah. and Chester, do you want to face each other or yeah. do you want to be next to each other? I'll face Chester. Okay, so yeah. you take up the benches. Face down your rival. <laughs> All right, who's on next? Hey, look. Okay, do you want to sit next to Chester or Ricaria? Uh, Ricaria. Okay, who's on next? The belly goes last. Okay, then I'll go. <laughs> All right, who do you want to sit next to, Calic or Chester? Uh, I'll sit next to Chester. Okay, so you're facing Calic. Calic. Uh, Lavelli, do you want to sit next to Erephus or Calic? Erephus. Okay, <laughs> so you're oh, looking at Calic. All right, cool. Yeah. So Never turn your well, side no, to tec- your enemy. Technically, she's looking at uh. <laughs> Ye- yes. Okay. Yeah, right. Your <laughs> eyes are here, not yeah. here. Okay. Okay. Uh, so as the gondola is going on, Featherine kind of ruffles her feathers again, and you see her long, elegant neck croon, crane, crane over to look at you. She says, I have a great question to start off this conversation. How do I know you exist? Oh god, that's that's a question. That's, I don't like that. That's deep. Um, I mean, I feel pretty real. Here, can, let me try. Can you feel us on your back? Oh, well, you're in a box behind me. I feel oh. the box attached to me. Therefore, I feel you through the box. So yes, I feel well, you. Then. I feel like that's pretty good evidence, right? Oh. No. Hmm. Very good. Hmm. And you see her just kind of like look off into the distance with a wistful look. So, and she falls um, quiet for a, for a few minutes. Who are all of you? Um, well, I'm Ricaria. Um, I, I, I don't add this to Sir Lance a lot. I think we went over that before. Yeah, yeah. your uh, your dad was an adventurer, um, oh. settled down and started farming. Kind of, yeah. Um, we he he like taught me and raised me, and um, so I learned everything from him. Everything that I know is from him. All right, and and you know him and Arafis points towards Kalik. Yeah, we're best friends. Um, I met Kalik. Oh gosh. I mean, we I remember you coming over and I said years ago, wasn't it? Yeah, when we first met. Um, and you came over and we started going on little adventures and stuff, uh, in the in the forests, um, behind our house. And it was a lot of fun. And then we decided to adventure together. And I mean, he lives in Chendal. Yeah. Are you from Chendal as well? Um, their face falters a little bit. Say, I- I'm not from uh, Chendal. I'm from the uh, just outside the Quellwood. Um, that's kind of where we we live. My my mom's in Chendal. Okay. Um, and your, uh, never mind. Um, 
You said you were married, right? Yeah, yeah, I'm Why married are you and at home with your kids. That's that's a, a good question. I um I woke up at the at the here at the carnival about eight years ago or so. Oh, and um I couldn't find my family afterwards, and uh, I've been searching for them but I, I haven't been able to find them again but then I something was tell, telling me that I should come back so uh, here I am wait 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 hold up so you wait you oh. were how long ago were you married um I've we've been married about 10 years now how old are you I'm about uh 35 you don't I mean, you look very young that oh, thank you that's very kind perhaps um, um chester here he actually yeah. works at the carnival um he might recognize the descriptions if you uh, had them have you been at the carnival for eight years were you here last time what was here uh, yes, uh, I have been at the carnival. Um, well, I've I've been at the carnival for I, I believe it's been last I can remember it was twelve years ago. But yeah. Okay. Um, well, I don't know how good your memory is, but uh, um, that... directions are a little so-so, but memory is pretty decent. Okay. Uh, my wife has uh darker blonde hair um she's hey. got sunburnt skin most of the time uh dark brown eyes uh human um she her clothes generally have uh these various like patterns and things on them uh just little decorations uh, her name is notes her name's <laughs> oh, that's a great name notes? Oh, her name's yeah. Kala. oh notes that's a cute name no her, her name's Kala. um oh Kala. okay so even um, with this description it doesn't ring any bells for you chester yeah um <clears throat> and i'll also say i have yeah. a son named ulrich and a daughter named viviana well um so many people we've gone through so many realms and so many people uh throughout the journey here i just follow along where the circus takes uh, takes me um <clears throat> but i think with that description we can look around maybe they're maybe they're here uh at, at this very circus now or maybe a little farther out I've do been... they do they live in the area um i don't i don't think so uh, i'm no? i've been having some memory problems and I yeah. don't exactly remember where our home was, which is a, oh. a bit of a trouble. Does the um, I know that you all were talking about Chendal earlier, because that's also where I'm from. Is that ring a bell at all, or anything, any place outside of Chendal? No, I mean Chendal's not far from here. I've, I've mm. I went to Chendal uh, after I first got out of the carnival eight years ago, but that's not where we live we live on a, a farm out in the country somewhere oh okay um so it's possible that your family's there waiting for you yeah but i i can't i don't know where it is well you know you I've might been, feel I've like you lost at... your family but it's just as equal that it wasn't them that was lost but you yeah true i mean well i mean after this we'll we can try to help you find them because i mean families should be together well, yeah um yeah the others I, here I hope so yeah the others here have lost various things uh as well we're hoping that um our adventures here will lead us to a solution for them. Perhaps your own solution lies with theirs. 
I, I hope so. That'd be, that'd be nice. But, uh, what about the rest? Uh, you said that you've been working here 12 years. Um, yes. What's, what's that been like? What, what did you do before? Oh, uh, well, uh, before I was, um, I sort of lived in Chendal. I, I, I lived with some parents. Uh, my parents were actually, uh, a book bender. So that they would make um, and help, you know, bend together books and such. And I always had a bit of a, a flair, I guess you could call it, for, for magic. I've always loved magic. And so they would always, like, anytime they would get, like, a, a book, you know, like, say if someone upgraded to a, a new book or, or something and they had to fix a book and they could give me the book, they would. Um, I frequently would go to their shops with them and such. And I had a friend named George who was really my only friend that I had in school. And so um, he uh, he sort of helped me, you know, have a little bit of confidence in myself to be like, you can do this, you can do this. And uh, one day I just kind of stumbled over into the circus and knowing that they came by because I sort of noticed that they, they're here, they leave, they're here, you know, like most circuses are traveling. And um, <clears throat> that's the last I remember is I, I told, jo uh, I told uh, George that I would let him in as soon as I could get someplace if I could if I could get hired in I let him in I let my parents in they're the three people who believed in me and the next thing I know is we're traveling everywhere and I don't know where they are and that's sort of who I'm hoping to find and now that we're back in Chendal I it still it, it still blanks me where everything is so everything is familiar but yet not it's really weird Chester <clears throat> Yes. As you were kind of recalling these different things, unfortunately, oh no, <laughs> you're saying I don't, I can't remember these things. That feeling oh. actually begins uh. to compound, and you feel oh, it no. settle in a little more potently. You have drawn the Fool card. I knew it. <laughs> uh, so this is a little different now. Um, with yeah. the fool card, you lose something. It doesn't have to be a memory. It can mm -hmm. also be a sense or a bond, your relationship with someone. You have to let go of something. You can choose what that something is. So I was about to ask a question, and this might spark a idea for you, Jacob. Okay. Um, because uh, Kaelic was actually going to ask, what I grew up in, in Chendal. Um, yeah. Other than than various traveling, I I've lived there my whole life. Uh, mm -hmm. What was the name of the bookbinding shop that your parents worked at? Perhaps when we leave here, I can help you find the shop again. Ooh, ooh. Um, weird question. Side mm -hmm. question. Mm-hmm. Uh, Chester and Calic, you two are the only one that grew up in Chendal, right? I believe that's true. Can you both yes. roll a history check? <gasps> and I know I'm not the GM, but <laughs> the I'm roll me a history, history check. check. I'm curious. The in character history can I, check. Can I use my dice tower? Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. yeah. All right. Hold on. Oh. Let's see if it'll actually show up on stream or not. Can you all see the dice at all? Uh, Let's see the number, blurry, but I can't see the number. It is a seven. Oh. Of course it is. Seven plus two. Nice. Okay. Um, yeah, nothing. So I was just curious, but you can. Yeah, just curious. Is you it... can go on. Shadow rolls. Shadow rolls. I shadow think. Rolls. I think to coincide with that seven. Um, I think Chester is just when he thinks about it more and more. I don't know if necessarily his shop. The shop of his parents is what he's starting to forget, but thinking more about um, uh, George and George uh, with, with his friend George, I think he's slowly starting to sort of, I think, forget what the name of the school they went to was. Mm -hmm. Okay. You begin to find that your bond with George is loosened just a little more. Mm hmm. Fuck George. Wow! Oh. Wow! You 
don't even know George. <laughs> he doesn't even You're go like here. with everybody, aren't you? It's not just me. <laughs> Look, it's been 12 years. Does Chester really know George? I, I think I do very Can much, thank you. Can anybody ever really know anybody else? Well, Chester, um... Yes. I mean, you said that, you know, your, your family was the only one who believes in you and what you do, but we believe in you, too. Well, I appreciate that. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, I, I don't really know you, but you, you seem pretty... Nervous. The vibe. It's just... It's, it's, well, it's Chester's fine. the one who brought us all together. It's true. Chester fell out of the sky. I came some lost yes. luggage that fell out of the sky. Yeah. Yes, I'm kind the lost of like, luggage. Kind of like very abruptly and super rudely almost as if they were not listening to your conversation at all and suddenly they're just aware that you're there again featherine says all right i have another question for the group of you uh what is joy um i don't know who that is um as a feeling that you get um, you know, if you oh. eat like a really good piece of cake, um, that you know that you don't need, but you wanted it, and then you get it, and then it just kind of fills you up with a lot of warmth. I think it's a feeling that you get when it's something that you don't need that you receive, but you secretly want, right? It's a Ooh. form of wonder with accomplishment. Oh, <laughs> joy is a. Uh, future fond memory. Oh, well, I suppose I've never thought of it that way. And you see, you see her head, Featherine, turns her big swan head to the other side, just and puts her eye on Erephus. What would you call joy? What is joy to you? Um, um, it's happiness, right? I mean, I'll feel pretty joyful when I get to see my family again. Uh, I was joyful when I first uh, when I first met my wife when we got married, when we we had our two kids. Um, I mean, it's it's happiness, yeah. No. Hmm. Yes, I suppose so. Oh, she looks again, wistfully off into the distance, her eyes glazing over as she continues pulling the gondola down the river. She trails to silence once more. Where are we on the river? Uh, We'll say that the group of you are now near the mystery mine. So you're on the southern side of the map. You're about halfway around the carnival. Right. I heard a lot about the one who's really experienced with sailing. And they look over to Lavelli. Mm, Lavelli glances at her. Well, tell us about yourself there, sailor. She uh, takes a deep breath. I don't know if we really have the time. I think we do. I mean, we got through most of us in that, you know, long span. So I think we have more time for you. She chuckles a bit well as most of you know i came here eight years ago with my brother and we got separated when i was younger i thought that i had to take care of him that i was the only one who could find him so i searched all over our small island and found no trace of him or the carnival so, um, sorry to interrupt for a bit of a selfish reason. You you were here eight years ago as well? She nods. We all were. Oh. Wait, you, you all were? Yeah. I mean, Chester was here 12 years ago, but the yeah. rest of us were. Yeah. Including our friend Riley. Yeah, they were here too. I think they're playing Dragon Chess right now. Well, they really wanted to play, so they're like, you know what? I have to go, and... 
they found a place, started challenging people. I think I saw a line at the orchard. There's just a line of people right now challenging. That would them. actually make a lot of sense. Yeah, he, I love that. He is the only they, one yeah, with an are. actual job. They are the only one with an actual job, after all. That so, is I true. would argue that an adventurer is an actual job. Thank you very much. Only while you're hired. Um, okay. That's that's fair. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, Erephus, you were saying... Hey, Sorry, you. yeah. Um, yeah. You, none of none of you all remember seeing. I mean, I know that my family and I probably don't look incredibly distinct, but um, you you don't happen to remember seeing me with with uh, with anybody back then, do you? Unfortunately, we don't seem to have a lot of memory of that visit at all. No. Okay. Um, sorry, sorry about that. Um, so Lavelle, you, you were sailing, trying to go around and find your brother? Something like that. Well? She, uh, chuckles a bit more. Well, when I ran out of places to search on the island, I figured, well, they must have left with the carnival taken overseas before... I knew it could just fly away. And I stowed aboard the only ship in the dock. We weren't known for much, but we at least had a pier. And she looks away for a moment. And you traveled, just stowed away in the ship? Unsuccessfully. They oh. eventually, well, rather quickly, found me and added me to their crew. Oh. Before long, my uh, search for my brother turned into a search of the world, and what was first a childlike instinct of protection, I understand now. My brother was the smart one. If anything, he'll find me before I find him. Seems we got a lot of people to find. No, it's quite useful in a a uh, group like this to have someone who has some skill at sailing. As you say that, uh, the group of you suddenly realize that Featherine was talking to you as oh. you were just having this conversation. And she says, Well, that is quite rude. Why won't you answer me? And all of a sudden, she begins to... She shakes about and the gondola begins to rock. I need DC 10 dex saving throws from everyone in the group. Oh no, I have a negative to this. It's a 19 from Kalik, a 10 from Arifus, 17 from Chester, <laughs> nine. <laughs> Lavelli with a 10, and Ricaria with a 9. Oh my god, I, I rolled a 3. That again. was. That Can scary. I, like, volunteer <laughs> to give. To like try to save Ricaria and I get them back in the boat, but I fall out. Uh, unfortunately, no, because okay. you have Kalik in between the two of you. Uh, right, 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 right. So what everyone sees is Ricaria. You are like right on the edge, right? You're on the outside of this bench. You go flying into the water. You hit the water with a splash. You disappear. Mm -hmm. Everyone else, you manage to hold Erephus and Lavelli very barely so. You almost get knocked out, but you catch yourselves. And Featherine huffs. Good. Uh, go Can in I after do... her. <laughs> Can I do a sleight of hand check to see if I could have grabbed Ricaria's books as she fell? <laughs> Please. <laughs> yeah, go for it. There's going to be a disadvantage, though. All right, well, I'll use my advantage to make it normal. Um, <laughs> All right. Yeah. Actually. Yes? Um, I very nearly forgot you messaged me earlier that one of the cards I got was the Fates card. Yes. I'm going to use that with my Dex 19 to grab her before she slips out of the boat. All right. Okay. So <clears throat> you feel this weird snap of reality you feel almost as if there's a sudden headache and you shake your head and 
Reality all around you is just a little different. You have drawn the Fates card. You can alter any one event as you please. The only thing you can't do is bring back dead gods. Um, so you get to rewrite this moment. Rikaria doesn't fall in. Kalik, you see Rikaria about to get knocked out, but what happens instead? Please tell me. Um, instead, um, actually, uh, Lavelli has experience on ships, as we've just been discussing, mm -hmm. uh, and is probably used to, as, as things start to rock, spotting, like, the way people are gonna move, so I'm gonna say that Lavelli notices that Rick is in danger of, of falling in, and reaches out and grabs her by uh, the arm before she actually falls all the way in. Okay. <clears throat> oh my gosh, I, I was gonna fall again into the water. Lavelli uh, pulls Rikari in close. That was a close <sighs> one. Um, Rick's <laughs> face just shoots up in a red. She's like, uh-huh, yeah, that's really close. Thanks. Yeah, nods a bit at that, holding on the arm for a second longer before letting go. Uh, <laughs> uh, thanks. Hey, I don't know what would have happened if my books got wet again. I should really see if there's like waterproof paper or something. Does this happen to you often? No. I mean, I'm I live by a river. I could, <laughs> but three three times in almost a one day that your books have been in danger. <sighs> It's really unlucky. When we have some time to take a lengthier rest, mm -hmm. I could probably waterproof the pages you've already done, but... Okay. Thank you. It's not a fast process, so it's not something we could do at the moment. It's okay. Um, during kind of this conversation, Rick has been been drawing in, in the book, that one of the books that she has. Um, by the time they're like on the boat, the other one that had been preserved by prestidigitation has disintegrated from like all the wetness from before. Um, and she leaves that behind, just puts it on the seat there and says, you know, I, I've honestly like memorized a lot of the stuff that I drew before, so I could probably just do it again. Um, but instead I drew this and Ricardo will turn it around and it's a very not well drawn, like sort of like as best as Rikari can do and it's like a little drawing of everybody including Riley so it's like all six of them all like together sitting on this boat and it's like I put Riley in even though they're not here but you know with us in spirit Erephus is on there too ah uh, yes mm -hmm. they quickly doodled Erephus in I thought this is nice uh. I'm gonna put it away now all right. It was very kind, Ricardo. Sorry, mm. that's yeah. I thought it'd be nice. I'm gonna right, put this Where, away. where was that? They open the book and they're like, "Here, see, you got like the horn." I can try drawing it better next time when I have more time. All right. Okay. <laughs> Makaria like takes it kind of personally. <laughs> Makaria does not know how to interact with Erebus. Oh, he's very nice, Makaria. It's fine. Um, just dying. The gondola comes to a slow stop, and the group of you realize that the ride is over. You are back where you started. And mm. there's another shake of a hip. And then the, and the platform falls down and steps descend from the gondola and onto the dock. Featherine lifts up her beak away from the group of you. Thanks. Thank you for the ride. I appreciate it. And Chester will step off of the... Thank you. Yes. Glad that's over. <laughs> Valley gets off the boat. You see the feathers bristling. Have a lovely wow. morning. Thank Tommy. you. At least one of you has manners. I, I said thanks. Oh, I said thank you. <laughs> well, it can't be said of you. Thanks. I love Ellie. Oh, 
She tried to throw you into the water. But you saved me. That's okay. You see someone is running up to the group of you. And Lavelli, you recognize this to be the dwarf that you saved from the dragonfly ride. Mm -hmm. They come up and they present to you Lavelli, kind of shouldering past everybody else. <laughs> they present to you Lavelli a, well, looks like a unicorn horn that's been hollowed out and it's full of candy. They go down to on one knee and they present this to you. The La Lavelli stands there a little confused for a moment. What is this? I would like to show you my a token of my appreciation. I can't remember if I told you my name earlier, and if I did, I might have told you the wrong name out of nervousness, but not my name is Ziri. Ziri? Yes. Z, Z I R I. Mm. Lavelli will gently take the unicorn horn. You know, I didn't save you to get something in return. Oh, no, no, no. There's no debt or anything. Of course not. Um, I understand. I just wanted to say thank you so much. I could have had a, a terrible fate. She uh, tilts the hat made out of vines towards him. You're very welcome. If I'm ever around, I'll be there to save you. Oh, you see little blushies across his cheeks and... He, he st takes a step back and he smiles to the rest of the group. He says, If you don't mind, I'd, I'd like to stick around a little bit. Army! Yes! You have drawn the <laughs> night card! <laughs> uh, I knew that was gonna come back. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we drew the whole deck, right? Um, right. So Someone was getting the night card. <laughs> Ziri is deathly loyal to you. They will take a mortal blow in order to save your life. I just, I just for me, I just love that it's coming back full circle. To be like, we made jokes about it last episode. Oh, that'll be, that's going to be a night card, isn't it? And it never ended up being in the night card anymore. Yeah. One more and we can I love put it. them all together and give them their own party and oh send them all their way. You what could start fun. your own adventuring guild or something. Yeah. It's it, those expedition modes in games where you like recruit a side <laughs> squad to go get resources for you. So yeah. we've got two halflings, a dwarf, and a minotaur. <laughs> yeah, I think, yeah. If yeah. they stack them all together, they'll equal the minotaur. <laughs> so uh, we'll say that enough time has passed that an another hour has gone by. You see that the sky, oh. instead of being mostly purple, it is now mostly orange. It is beginning to approach dawn. Oh. Oh, man, we're getting closer. We're getting closer to uh, the crowning. We have yeah. one last ride. We do the mine carts. I'm so excited. Oh yes. Do we want to go to the mine carts? Yeah. Should we decide on pairings beforehand? Oh, who's sitting with who? Yeah. Mm. What's Who to decide? Uh, um. If if you wouldn't mind, I'd be happy to tr to ride with the uh with the Rafas. Um, it's been made clear to me that explaining my uh, my experience is not a welcome thing but Arafis uh, doesn't know my parents perhaps if we're going to be working together I can fill him in and not bore the rest of you no Kalik your experience is valid and that, that's fine by me Oh, I'm down. I'm up for riding with you. So I'll say that you are all talking as you're making your way over towards the mystery mine. Prometheus, mm -hmm. Prometheus thank you so much for the raid. Welcome on in, raiders. Woo! A little, let's have some fun. Woo! We're almost done with our night here at the Witchlight Carnival. As you're making your way towards the mystery mine and you're closing in the distance, you realize these mine carts, as they are whooshing by you, they are large, large enough to hold eight people. Jesus. Oh, well, do we all, right, all want well, to share uh, one again? <laughs> well, it looks yeah. much smaller from above. It does. 
we we can if if I mean unless Arafis and Kalik want to go off on their own, I I'd, I'd like to share a card. You're certainly welcome, Rakaria. Thanks. Hopefully, this one won't rock like the gondola did. Yeah. Well, there's no swan mm-hmm. attached to this. Do you yeah. think the the carts talk? We'll make them talk. Too <laughs> much in this place does. Huh. All right. Um. Okay. So, yeah, I'm I'm fine uh, sharing a cart. Awesome. Let's get a cart. And and- a, then agreed. Let's all share a cart. Okay. Okay. Uh, so the group of you head over, propelled by magic, mine carts laden with fair goers trundle into an opening carved like a dragon's mouth. The carts reappear oh. moments later on the far side of the attraction with passengers expressing a mixture of bewilderment, fear, and excitement. Near the entrance, a male dwarf, dressed like a wizard, shouts, Unlock the mysteries of your mind with the mystery mine! He has bushy eyebrows, wears a pointy hat, and holds a large clockwork contraption shaped like a giant eye. As the group of you begin to approach, he says, It will cost you one ticket punch, please. Yeah. Another ticket. Yes. Everyone holds out a ticket. So punch, Everyone punch, 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 punch. Okay. Yeah. Uh, he beckons you close. He says, please have a gander with the all-seeing eye. And he holds up this contraption. You have the choice here to lean in and look very deeply into this eye, or you can ignore it. I'm going to look in the eye. <laughs> I look okay. in the eye. Sam. Lavelle will watch everyone else and then look into the eye. Okay, I need everyone to private message me on Zoom. Uh, I want you to message me the name of a creature your character fears. Oh. What What if it's a creature the character used to fear? I think it's actively fears. Okay. The way it's worded. Mm. That's gonna take me a second. Yeah, take your time. And as you are all kind of gathered together, he loads you up into this giant cart that fits eight people, and he begins to strap you all in. Oh. Huh. <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, so, as each of one, each one, okay, okay. (laughs) Some people are throwing stuff off. (laughs) Oh, Oh, this is complicated. All right, um, okay, this is gonna be a weird fucking ride, y'all. Um, so the group of you load up into this cart, and it begins to... Gain speed, and you pass through this giant wooden dragon mouth. And as you do, you feel yourself rising up out of your seat. It almost as if you're going through zero gravity, but you're still in your seat. It just has this feeling of lift that goes from your toes all the way up to your hair. And you feel as if you're plunging. You see a realm of undulating hills, corkscrewing trees, and prismatic skies all around you. I need a wisdom saving throw from everyone. Die. Good. I'm gonna use one of my advantage dice for this. Okay. <laughs> there, that's a good thing. <laughs> All right. So that's an eight from Kalik, sixteen from Chester, eleven from Arifis, a fourteen from Ricaria, and a nine from Lavelli. Okay, Chester, mm-hmm. you see an illusion spring up in front of you and you realize this is just magic. You can tell that it's meant to take the shape of something that you fear, but it doesn't quite get it right. 
you see something of a skeletal creature, but it isn't as frightening as one might think. Instead, you see through the illusion and see that it is literally just a pumpkin attached to a broom handle. Oh, the pumpkin king almost scared me. <laughs> uh, Arcaria. Dun, dun, dun. As you're looking around, you see suddenly something springs forward and it almost... It's inches away from your face. You can feel its breath hot to just wash over your features. But you realize that this thing is incapable of taking any one shape. It looks as if it is shifting between the identities of a couple people. But they're wrong. The eyes are not the same color. The lips are a different shape. The nose, no, that person had a much larger, wider nose. And it doesn't quite register on you. You're able to see through it, and you see instead, this is a giant lollipop with some lint stuck to it. Oh, ew, I hate when that happens. He says, well, there's a giant lollipop stuck to the back of her hair. <laughs> <laughs> Not again! <laughs> Kalik. You... You, you see something spring forward towards you, and you feel hands grip your shoulders. They are these long, spindly fingers attached to these long, gangly limbs. And this creature, almost ghoulish in appearance, has these wide butterfly wings, but they are not... They are not colorful and bright like you have seen here in the carnival. Instead, they are dark and ragged and torn and you see this massive creature oppressive and powerful bearing down on you can you give me a description or example of what calyx scream sounds like uh calyx scream uh is probably more a sound of anger than fear. I mean, it comes from a place of fear, but but it, he he twists it into into anger. Um, he actually pulls one of the daggers from his pack, puts himself on the other side of this cart mm -hmm. from the thing, and is like, "No, you can't have me." About to get banger snatched. As, as you say that, it explodes into purple butterflies and it begins to dissipate, almost as if carried away with a breath of wind. You realize it's just an illusion. But that feeling of fear is very real. For Lavelli, mm -hmm. you see that the ride is just careening through a couple of different sceneries. Uh, you see, it takes you through a jagged valley of stone, and it's almost as if it is some kind of an underground chasm or some kind of fortification. You see that some of the stone has been carved out, and you see these massive stone creatures on either side and all of a sudden, they lunge at you from both sides, almost inches away from your face. And you can feel pebbles breaking off and just kind of splattering you like gravel. Can you tell me, either by description or example, what Lavelli's scream sounds like? There are too many people sleeping for me to uh, give an example. Okay. <laughs> yeah. No, don't do that. <laughs> um, but uh, it's a loud shrill like crow screech just a single loud burst of sound before she is blindly swinging at what's in front of her yeah as you're kind of swinging around the stone gargoyle like creatures just kind of crumble away and you're able to push them aside as if they're made completely of dust 
and you realize that it's just an illusion. But the fear is very real. She uh, looks at the others, feeling incredibly embarrassed. Erephus, you don't see something come from in front of you. All of a sudden, you have this feeling that there's something behind you. The very fine hairs on the back of your neck rise, and you feel this sort of chill run down your arms. And as you whip your head around, you see you are face to face with a green tiefling with one horn. And they are staring at you, unblinking, unnervingly close. You can feel the heat of their skin baking onto yours. What does Erephus's scream sound like? Sounds like a very high-pitched girl scream. And I tumble back and fall out of the cart. Okay, that's actually perfect because you have oh, drawn no. the void card. Oh, Erephus, no. Oh, no. Erephus just straight up disappears. If any of you kind of lunge to look over the edge, you see nothing. There's nothing underneath you. In fact, when you look up, you Erephus. realize there's nothing around you. All of this is not real. The car is floating through nothing. Um, I gotta find him. We gotta. We gotta. Rick's gonna try and jump out. <laughs> I'm not uh, using a magic. Really gonna grab Rick by uh, having her yeah. arms around her torso and just pulling her back. Yes. Oh, we gotta Same. Leave it to those who can fly. Oh yeah, you, you can fly. I'm uh, okay. <laughs> and sinks back down to their seat. And then Lavelli will jump over the cart once she's sure Ricaria is not gonna try to follow. Okay, Lavelli. The second that you lose contact with the cart, you just vanish. There is no diving. There is no gliding. You're just gone. Oh, that's no one, you guys. Hey, roll keep new characters. Uh, keep your uh, hands and feet. <laughs> They're gone. The we gotta, we gotta, we gotta find them. We gotta, we gotta jump down. We gotta get them. We can't leave them. Emma, are you ready for a spinoff series? Yeah. <laughs> I, we'll call it I, Bird and Bumpkin. <laughs> we'll have our sessions on uh, leap years on the extra day. <laughs> Only er- when it's a Wednesday. Erephus and Lavelli, you begin to fall through nothing. Lavelli, even with your capability of flying, you find unable to catch lift. You are tumbling. You almost feel as if your feathers have been clipped. You're falling through absolutely nothing. No starlight, no moonlight, no pinpoints of fire. And you feel as if you're falling for a very long time. You can't tell if you're going to hit any kind of bottom. But you see each other. And you are falling at the same rate right beside one another. I don't think Erephus notices Lavelli. I think as he's falling, he's almost like scrunched up in like a ball, um, like muttering to himself. Although since we're, I don't know if there's like wind or anything, but uh, it may be hard to hear the mutters. So there is absolutely no wind. You're falling without any resistance. So, Lavelli, you can hear muttering, but you can't quite make out the words. And, Lavelli, as you're looking at Erephus curled up on themselves, you get the sense, this is not real. This is just an illusion. Everything that you're going through is just an illusion. Including Erephus or everything around No, us? E- everything around you. <laughs> Erephus is very real here. I you're haven't real. been real the entire time. How, how Ooh, far we, we, away we go back from... to like, what is real? Are you here? <laughs> We're um, still in the swan. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you get the sense all you've got to do is just get through to Erephus. How far away is Erephus? You can grab them. All right. So Lavelli is going to reach out and just grab Erephus by the back of their cloak 
pull them in close and then just give them a very tight and strong hug. Just saying, you're not alone. Just whispering it on repeat. In their mutterings, you hear for the first couple seconds that you grab onto him. You hear him muttering, that's not me. That's not me. That's that's not me. But as you begin to mutter and you pull him into this embrace, his muttering stop and instead it's replaced by slow broken breaths. Just listen to my heart. Feel my feathers. The senses around you. All right. Okay. Breathe. You're okay. They're starting to take deep breaths and you can tell that they're shaky, but with one breath after another, they begin to calm. Where are we? I think we're stuck in another illusion. All right. How do we, how do we get out? Well, it would have been nice to have Chester for that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Lavelli is going to glance around and see if there's by focusing hard, if there's anything that's out of the ordinary, that's different from the rest of this void. Roll me a perception check. Hey, I'm bad at those. (laughs) (laughs) 20. Very good. Okay. You look down. You realize the cart is right underneath you. You're just kind of falling, but not going anywhere. Maybe if you just try to decide where you want to go. Lavelli glances slightly downward at Erebus. Era. If I can call you that. Um, sh- sure, yeah. The others, they're just below us. Okay. Okay. Just close your eyes, think about them, and reach. Okay. Okay. And with one arm to wrap, wrapped around Arifis, she'll do the same. Okay. As the two of you do so, Lavelli, mm-hmm. you have successfully completed this encounter. You level up. You drew the comment <gasps> card. Hey. Oh, yeah. Fuck yeah. <laughs> Good, because that felt like it deserved. <laughs> <laughs> Great. All of a sudden, dunk, dunk, Lavelli and Erephus just plop down into one of the benches right behind the group of the three of you. You are all together in this cart as it careens through this fake universe. Oh, I'm, 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 I'm glad you're both okay. I was about to jump out. Yeah, uh, she was. Don't don't do that. Oh. Uh. I'm really glad you two are okay. What happened? Okay, okay. Eventually, it begins to slow down, and you exit out of a cavern door, reappearing here in the carnival. <clears throat> well, um. Uh, that was certainly an interesting ride. Um, yeah. I I have a feeling I know why most people don't talk about the mystery mine, but you know. Yeah, let's just have it remain a mystery and never ride it again. Yeah, well, I, we'll never. I think that's their goal. Yeah. We'll never do that or talk about that again. Yeah. Talk about it. Talking about what happened is good. Uh, we will never talk about it again. 
<laughs> okay, I respect your boundaries. As the group of you begin to disembark, you see that it is almost dawn. Oh. Flocks of people are beginning to head towards the central part of the carnival, towards the big top. Oh, there's a lot more people gathering at the big top again. I think it might be time. Okay, oh. okay. <laughs> Let's see the end of this show. Yeah, let's see who gets crowned. I mean, I, that was terrifying that we lost you yeah. two and I thought you were gone forever and that would have been awful. I would have cried a lot. But yeah. I'm really excited to see who gets crowned. I'm Ar always interested to see too. It's always fun. Arifus, do you have any magic items? <coughs> no? Okay. You kind of feel at your pockets. You feel like you might have lost something, but you realize you have everything that you're supposed to. You drew the talons card. Do you have a healing potion? No, I don't think so. You're good. You're good. Yeah, I don't. Next you time, find I'll a get healing you potion. You pick up the bottle. It's broken. And it shatters. It <laughs> One of the berries yeah. explodes in your face. Berries. Berries. Oh my god. Berries and cream. Berries and cream. Well, they're creamed now. Oh, yeah, uh, still, they're still on my horn. People are going to the big top. <laughs> Let's go to the big top. Big top. Say my goddess's berry? desperation has grown. <laughs> I'm gonna eat a berry. Let's eat one. All right. As the group of you begin to make your way towards the big top, you see that it is in high spirits. People are laughing. Bubbles are popping. Fireflies are buzzing. Yeah. It, it's it's a good time. Where's this fucking thing? Here we go. I was like, I've dragged these fools again. so far. I need to finish this. <laughs> you see that like the uh big top extravaganza that the 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 seats are filling up. People are gathering together and a great number of them have food with them. You see Candlefoot, this mime. Uh, is making their way through the crowd, entertaining people as they're getting seated. You see that Durlagron is sitting right next to Mr. Witch by this large stage that has been set up in the center of the big top. You do not see Mr. Light quite yet. Would the group of you like to find a seat in the middle, close to... Where do you want to sit? You can sit anywhere. I think Arafis just goes for the first seat, like closest to him as he enters the tent. Oh, are okay. we sitting here? Okay. Yeah, Ricardo will sit next. I no longer have to keep an eye out for the Kenku, so. Yeah. Yeah. I was just thinking the same. Now we can all sit together. Yeah, let's all yeah. sit together. With our, our four follow ons. Yeah, where is. <laughs> they look around. It's like. Have you seen Fine? I feel like we lost Fine. Roll me a perception check. Okay, I'd love to. I'll um, roll one as well, because I got two people to look for. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. Oh. Karia get advantage on trying to find fine people since they flirt so much. <laughs> perception, 14. Okay, that's an 18 from Kalik, 14 from Rikaria. So... Vicaria, you can't quite find fine, but Kalik, you see Arlu and Martyr are sitting on the other side of the big top clearing here, and they are both sharing uh, candy outside of the same unicorn horn. Oh. Um, I will uh, sort of wave to try and get their attention and like beckon them over to sit with us. Okay. Wow. They were uh, they, they notice you and uh you see you see Martyr immediately scramble up. The, the candy goes flying. You see that there are fairy dragons that swoop by and pick up every single one of them. Not a single piece of candy hits the ground. Uh, you see Martyr scrambling through the crowd and uh he, you see that he for a second he considers running across the clearing. But then Arlu grabs the back of him and pulls him into the stands, and they begin to slowly make the long way around to you. 
Are you are you sure they weren't having a moment of their own? Did they go to the swans? I I just told them where we were. They didn't have to come over. I don't think you know Martyr very well. <laughs> you hear a Lord Calic, Lord Calic. Oh, I'm so very glad to find you. I'm so sorry I lost track of you. There were so many people and adventures. You see Marlu, uh, Martyr. <laughs> That's their ship name. <laughs> uh, you see uh, Martyr, like, kind of throw himself down to sit down next to you. Well, uh, I certainly hope that you uh, had some good adventures. Oh, yes, we did. We we performed snail racing. It was fantastic. Oh, quite quite excellent. Uh, the the others took a, a whack at that earlier. Oh, very good. <laughs> How did you do, Arlu? Arlu just kind of looks unhappy as he's perceiving another cor a unicorn horn of candy beside him in the hands of another person. Uh, we did just fine. Lavelli hands Arlu the unicorn horn she was given, full of candy. You see a blush just wash over his face and his hands shake a little as he accepts it wordlessly and begins to tuck into it. Sorry about your last one. I appreciate it. Thanks. What's your name again? Lavelli. Right. Okay. <laughs> Ever since the mine, Lavelli's feathers have been slowly like unpoofing themselves. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So they're finally starting to come back to a rest. Okay. Uh so all of a sudden, poof, the lights cut off. You see this silver hoop beginning to descend from the ceiling, and a single light illuminates Mr. Light. Dun, dun, dun. Mr. Light. Oh, I spelled that wrong. Me. Wait. Look at this art. Yeah. So you see Mr. Light spinning very gently with this hoop as it gets lowered down. And you see this wide grin take his face. <gasps> Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the crowning of the Witchlight Monarch. I am Mr. Light, and it is my delight to show you who is worthy of the crown. And as he takes his witch like vein he waves it around in the air and as he shoots it off into different directions you see these streams of golden butterflies explode out and light glitters down on everyone all around you there are oohs and ahs in every direction he very gently dexterously does a backflip off of the hoop and it begins to ascend up he lands right on the stage and he says now, there can only be one witch-like monarch. And it will be the most glorious, the most festivious. Only one is worthy of such a great honor. And he points the weather vane out, and you see this giant butterfly begin to gently, lazily fly over the entire audience here. You see Mr. Witch, Durlagron, and Candlefoot slowly begin to make their way onto the stage. Candlefoot opens a box that he's holding, and he presents it to Mr. Witch. You see Mr. Witch check his pocket watch one last time, snap it closed, put it into his waistcoat. He reaches into this box and pulls out a crown it is brilliant. It is bright. Here in the dimness of this tent, it almost is blinding to look at. Mr. Light continues to point the weather vane, directing the butterfly, and it slowly 
begins to wander in your direction. And it hovers right over your group. You hear a collective gasp as everyone holds their breath, all eyes on the five of you. Okay, like it's totally gonna be you. Not be crying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It'd be awesome. It'd be so cool. Or you, Jester. I don't know. Any of us, really. That'd be really cool. I kind of move away from all of them. Ricari <laughs> <laughs> is like, no. <laughs> And I wish I didn't sit in the middle of everyone now. The giant golden butterfly made of light slowly begins to fall. And it begins to shrink. And you see it beginning to mimic the shape of all of the... You are all wearing these fake pixie wings. It begins to mimic the shape of these wings. And it settles on Chester's back. Chester, all of a sudden you feel yourself rising, pulling up against your will, and you're beginning to float through the air as these wings are pulling you forward. I'm not all using of my magic! All of you see as Chester is lifted by magic and brought to the stage, and you are very gently placed in front of Mr. Witch and Mr. Light. In this closeness, you realize this crown is made completely out of golden butterflies. Mr. Witch... Stands in front of you. Mr. Witch. Mr. Witch. Picture. Show. Picture. He very carefully places this golden crown onto your head, Chester. And there's a roar of applause all around you. And Mr. Light says, we have crowned our witch-like mon witch monarch. And he bows. And Mr. Witch bows. Everyone begins to bow. All to you, Chester. Is there anyone in the group oh. that does not bow? I'm bowing. I'm bows. Oh, for sure. I'll bow. I'm probably like the last one to bow, though. Come on, F. The, the crown begins to very slowly fade away. You see these butterflies just slowly winking out of existence. And these wings, they begin to dim. And they're, they slowly become more mundane, looking like your fake wings again. You gain a feature. Ooh. Add this to your character sheet. Charm of the Monarch. Ooh. You can sprout a pair of beautiful butterfly wings. As long as you have the wings, you gain a flying speed equal to your walking speed, and you gain a plus five bonus on all charisma-based ability checks. These effects last for one hour. After you use this charm three times, it vanishes from you. Oh, yeah. nice. So you, as these effects begin to wear off, you get this sense that there is some kind of reserve of power that you can call on later on. And slowly, the festivities begin to wind down. People are applauding, people are coming up to you. They're like, I want your autograph, please. Oh, can you, can you bless my, my cupcake? Please, oh, yeah, blah, blah, blah. Bless, yes. <laughs> bless, bless, bless. <laughs> like everyone's cupcake. <laughs> Yes. Um, so you see everyone is like coming up to the stage and congratulating Chester. Mr. Witch and Mr. Light are flanking either side of him. Do any of you want to come up? You see that people are beginning to slowly filter out as well. So if the line does get smaller and smaller. Lavelle is just going to walk up beside Chester and wrap an arm behind his neck. Ricaria, if Chester's okay with it, um, we'll just mm -hmm. like sprint up after there's not a lot of people and just like grab and pull him into a hug, like with oh. Lavelli there. Oh, oh. yes, oh, yes, hugs. Congratulations, I'm so happy for you. It's so nice. And just start sobbing. In a way, does this make you employee of the month? <clears throat> um, I guess so. Uh, you have oh, drawn the throne card absolutely. Mr. Light, <laughs> Mr. Light kind of like leans in and also puts his arm over Lavelli's arm. He's on the other side of you and he says, yes, 
The very first employee of the month. It's oh. you, Chester. Uh, I guess you know who I am now. Oh, we'll never forget. Kaelic is is much more reserved, but will, you know, give a give a polite bow of the head. Very well done. A good show. Thank you. I think um, Arifus is still kind of sitting in the stands and is watching everybody leave the tent, trying to like look out for his family. Roll me a perception check. Seventeen. Okay. Uh, as you're looking, you spot someone interesting. For a second, you could swear it's your wife. And you, fi you find that your breath hitches and you stare a little harder and you realize, no, no, that's not them. It's not, but it's close. They stare back at you. They don't blink. They stop where they're standing. You see people are moving around them. They look at you in a way that someone would when they see someone they recognize. But you don't know who this person is. You have drawn the rogue card. Someone walks in between, kind of obscuring your line of sight. And when they pass through completely, the person you were watching, they're gone. Jesus Christ, it's Jason Bourne. <laughs> <laughs> Married to Jason Bourne? Um, Arifus, like, looks around trying to find them again, but obviously is unable to. But this whole situation was pretty unsettling. Uh, mm -hmm. As the crowds then, uh, he'll stand up and head towards the rest of them. Okay. Uh, as the crowd begins to die down, Mr. Witch says... If you are ready, perhaps it is time for us to show you the way you were meant to go. Yeah. Um, just to rewind just a tiny bit, I think in the middle of all of this with Chester, there's a part of him that is like, there's like, it, it's like, I would say about 95%, 98% happiness. There's a 2% of him that is just like, if there was ever a time to show my best friend George and my parents believing in me was worth it. It would have been right now and they weren't here. And there's a part of him that's just a little saddened by it. But when everybody starts to kind of run up and give him a hug, he sort of gets this like, well, they aren't here, but they have, there are people that will tell them. There will be people to show off that I've, I've done something great. And so a bit of happiness starts to come back to him. And then, yeah. Have you okay. met my friend Chester? He's famous. Caleb <laughs> okay, gets more and more people Chester. to name drop. That's the adventure. Caleb <laughs> never gets famous, but everyone around him does. Yeah. <laughs> so. Yes. yes. Mr. Witch and Mr. Light begin to lead you out of the big top. And you begin to make your way towards the Hall of Illusions. Ooh. Oh, we've been here before. They are quiet as they lead you on. You see that most people are heading towards the entrance. The carnival is beginning to slowly die down as it's closing down one attraction at a time. Lights are slowly winking out. But the Hall of Illusions remains lit. And as you approach, they step through. Candlefoot is not here to punch any tickets. They step inside. Do you follow? So, um, what, sorry, what ex exactly is going on? Maybe they're oh. leading us to things that we lost. Yes. I think, um... As a bit of a, as a bit of a uh, information for you, <clears throat> Mr. Light and Mr. Witch are the two that run this place. They're what, they are what make the wild magic 
ma they are the magic behind the wild magic. Um, they have um, they they have got the power to sort of help, and they've told us before that they would they would help us with um, finding our our way as long as we kept doing and said things for them. And it looks like this might be part of it. As long as the mood of the circus stayed light. Yes, as long as the mood of the circus stayed happy, and I think it's gonna stay happy for a little while longer now. Uh, all right. Um. Well, I'll... you're all apparently my destiny, so um, I'll I'll follow you. Wait, were you destiny? That's what. Uh... <laughs> I heard Pizzoli said this like seven times. <laughs> I was in there. That's what. I was um, warning. Eliwick <laughs> told me. Bird. Oh. Well, anyway, yeah, um, she said I was supposed to meet you all and that we were destined for each other or something. Did she Lavelli. also claim that she'd met you before, but you have no memory? Yeah, yeah. Tricky one, that. Lavelli yeah. holds out a hand to Erephus. Whatever, whatever greater or lower meaning, we're happy to have you. Thanks. Uh, is it like a handshake hand? Yes. Okay, got it. Uh, Arifus Hold will my hand. Shake your hand. Yeah. I'm holding. Thank you. All right. Uh, so as the group of you make your way towards the Hall of Illusions, uh, you see picture. Ooh, picture! I love picture. Oh wait, there's no picture. I lied. Oh, <laughs> I was excited. I give, I take. You there see, was, there was a scarier up. roller coaster than the mine. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on, there will be a picture. Oh shit! Hold on. Okay. Is there a picture? <laughs> Hold on! Oh my god, I'm getting there. You you walk up to this large tent, and it's painted with a mural of shifting images that show grinning fairies diving into pools of color. There are helical Ooh. stripes of the tents pointed canopies rotate in spirals and the whole display seems designed to befuddle onlookers. As you make your way in through... Pavelli avoids the box that makes people laugh. Yeah, you all expertly avoid the glass cabinet. Um, as Mr. Witch and Light move through the Hall of Illusions, you see their reflections in the mirrors. You, sh you see these gloomy Shadar Kai children and your own youthful reflections are following behind. So we did get descriptions last time of each one of our characters, except for Erephus. What do we see when we see the younger version of Erephus in these mirrors? Um, so you see a young green tiefling, uh, the horn beginning to sprout that you know now, but perhaps seeing them like this uh they're you if you saw a little tiefling kid like this maybe you'd think the other horn hasn't like started growing yet but uh you see a li little green tiefling the hair is longer uh they're wearing a dress and uh um they're kind of like walking behind have a big smile plastered on their face um but to Arifis, he sees uh, a young human boy with uh, brown hair, uh, a little bit kind of shaggy and uh, has kind of like dirt all over his body. Uh, and he's like following behind along with everybody else. Okay. Soon, the group of you are brought to a halt. Picture time, picture, picture. <gasps> there was a picture. Ooh. Picture. Picture. Ooh. Ah. Okay. Uh, you're, you were brought to a halt. You see, the mirrors around you are reflecting your true age here. Mr. Witch addresses the group of you in a hushed tone. Everything you seek and more lies beyond this mirror. If you mean to step through, then stand in front of the glass and repeat this rhyme. Hither, thither, here, and there. Wander, yonder, show me where. And he takes a step to the side. Mr. Light joins him, flanking on the other. 
and you see this portal just beginning to glow very faintly, this one particular mirror in between them. Who Let's steps try. up first? Uh, well, Arya looks to the rest and says, He's Will we be able to find the things that others have lost too? Everything that is lost can be found in Prismere. Then, mm. without even looking at anyone else or waiting any longer, Lavelli takes out the ball, walks up to the mirror, and repeats, Hither, thither, here and there, wander yonder, show me where before stepping through. Mist swirls in the mirror, blotting out your reflection, and Lavelli is gone. Arifis steps forward, uh, looking between Mr. Witch and Mr. Light. This being really the first time they've met this entire time, but not really going to address it much. <laughs> yeah, thanks. Um, I appreciate that. <laughs> they Hello, look into the portal, uh, and he says, Hither, thither, here and there, wander yonder, show me where. Erephus, for a split second, you see the present version of this human with brown hair in the mirror. That is what you perceive here. And you see the eyes staring back at you. All of a sudden they turn red you have drawn the flames card oh you're about to get a bunch of bad cards though. i feel like <laughs> of the nine cards one was neutral the other are bad <laughs> but before you have any time to react to this strange visage of yourself question mark mist swirls in the mirror blotting out your reflection and then you're gone We gotta get you all those plot points. Yeah, <laughs> catch Chester, me up. Chester will look at the both of them and he'll ask, <clears throat> when we go through the portal, are we meeting, are, am I still gonna be meeting everybody around me or will I be separate from everybody else? We don't know. <laughs> As you I see, suspected. this is a one way ride. You're going to have to find your own way back. Get in, loser. We're going um, adventuring. <laughs> <laughs> well, I found I found my way here once. I'm pretty sure I can find my way here again. Oh, I'm sure you will. You seem very capable. After all, you are employee of the month. I am, and I'm very happy with this. And uh, he's a uh, big smile, and all he can think about is his family and his best friend, and says the words, <clears throat> Hither, thither, here and there, wander yonder, show me where. Mist swirls in the mirror, blotting out your reflection. Chester is gone. Rakaria looks to Kalik and says, You know, to be honest, um, I, even though I lost something, you know, way back when, I feel like just in these last few hours, I kind of found something new that I really appreciate. And it's you and everyone else. So I hope that I don't lose all of you when we go through. Um, where where did they they say they said everything can be found where? In Prismir. Okay. This is where our Kenku friend had wanted to go. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, from from the moment that, that was said, and I feel like three members of the party like were like, "Yeah, we're off." Yeah, mm -hmm. Rikaria might have noticed this earlier, but definitely notices it when like, Rikaria notices this, it. Definitely notices when when speaking to to Kalik. Kalik has gone like pale at the mention of going to Prismere. What's wrong? You, you, you know about my father. Yeah. I. 
He never wanted me to go to the Feywild. To the Feywild. Well, Kaylee. In, in the mystery mine, I thought the Fey were going to get me for a moment there. Well, I have an idea. I don't know if it's going to work, but we, we can try it. And Rikaria takes Kaelic's hand, gives it a, a squeeze, says, we'll say it together, and we'll go through it together. I know that your dad said not to go, but this is our adventure. This is our story, and we're going to face this together, okay? Me and you, and Erfus and Chester and the belly. And maybe Riley will eventually catch up. We'll see. <laughs> okay. All right. But let's make it as short of a trip as we can. Okay. Can't so promise that, but I'll be beside you. Okay. So as the two of you kind of step forward, holding hands, Mr. Witch puts his hand on Ricaria's shoulder. Mr. Light puts his hand on Calix's shoulder. Mr. Witch says to you very seriously, Mind the rule of three, future, present, and past. Find the alicorn and free the dormant queen at last. They both give you a little squeeze and then they begin to walk away. I don't know what that means. I'll try to write it down once we're there. Yeah. Let's go through before they wonder where we've gone. Okay, let's do it. All right. And Rikaria will say, hopefully in unison with with Kaylik. Yeah. <laughs> um, hither, thither, 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 here, and thither there. here and there. Wander, Wander yonder, yonder show, show me where. where. Mist swirls in the mirror, blotting out your reflection. And then you're gone. Good thing the void card's already gone. <laughs> the screen fades to black. And as it does, we see something very different. We don't see the party. We don't so go where really they go. two really bad cards. <laughs> I have these two right here. The bad ones that we had at the end last time. For me... No, one of the bad bad ones are last. One's time, for Calic, one's for Chester, and this other one is for Erethus. But oh, two no. of these are bad. Oh. None for me. <laughs> I have a question. Chester. Mm. What does George look like? <gasps> oh man, I don't think I ever put that much effort into what he looks like. Alright, do you want me to make it up for you? If you would, if you don't okay, mind. Okay, I don't mind at all. George! George. Dear George, your best friend, George, is... Is he younger uh, or the older than well, <laughs> if, for that tree. If it helps any, he was a bard or trying to be a bard. Okay, that helps. We see... We see a lively tavern. And in this tavern is a... Triton. You see this very handsome young man. He is currently strumming on a lute, and you can hear the faint laughter and just wonder of people around him as he's performing. George stands up as he finishes a song, gives a bow. A couple of people drop coins into a hat that is laid out in front of him. He swoops it up, he shares a few drinks, about 30 minutes pass as he mingles with the last of the crowd, and then he steps out into the dark street of Chendal. He did pretty good today. He made quite a bit of a sum. And he feels proud. He looks up, draws in a deep breath, and begins to walk towards home. 
As he wanders into a dark alley, all of a sudden, the shadows fall on him. And we hear the soft clinking of coin on the cobblestone. We see a smear of blood. That is all we see of George. You oh. have drawn the Don John card. Oh. Someone. Not Don John. Someone has taken George prisoner, but you don't know. Oh, whoever took one of my parents, probably. <laughs> oh, no. And then the screen fades to black. It could have been worse, Chester. There's still one more card. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Hold on. Another parent dies. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on, I have to open up my... <laughs> I have to open my roulette. Whose parent am I going to kill next? Uh, Joke's on you. I don't have any parents. <laughs> I you know of. I have a new map. Ooh. 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 A bunny. In our screen that is faded to black, we see text scroll on. And it says... Chapter two, Hither. Oh. As... Chapter three is going to be Thither. <laughs> hey, spoilers. Gosh. Yeah. As you enter through this area, there, there is something very different here. This music is not right. I already see something for Kalik to use his key on. The mountain oh. with the large keyhole. <laughs> or the key. <laughs> and feet. And feet. I did notice the feet. You stand at the edge of a raised and broken causeway under a hazy twilight sky. The causeway, which is built from pale stones that glow faintly from within, towers over the surrounding landscape, but large sections of it have crumbled away. The parts that remain are separated by large gaps where portions have collapsed. All around you, a fog-shrouded swamp spreads out below in all directions, and up from its murk wafts the smell of rotting plants. Also rising from the swamp is the music of nature, a discordant symphony of croaking frogs and singing birds. Each one of you, in the order that you had gone through the mirror, you step out onto this bridge of the Queen's Way. You are here. Letters appear. You step out of a wall of fog. I look behind you, you just see nothing but thick fog, completely obscured. And as you step out, you feel, you feel the warmth, the comfort of the carnival wash away. Instead, you are here in this fetid, murky, humid, damp place where the air is clinging to you. Lovely. You are all standing here together. Oh, good. We're all oh. together. Oh, my gosh. I was so scared that we'd be, I'd be alone again, and we I don't want to be alone again. Hi. <clears throat> we made it together. Yeah. Um, as I as I look um as I look on me DM, do I do I still have the wings on me anymore? Like the ones that we were admitted to pass into the carnival, or are they did? Yeah, they so gone? you all have your cardboard wings still on. You have everything. Okay. Huh? Lily takes off her cardboard wings. Okay. Yeah, I'll follow. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That, that okay. Feels much better. We're doing this. Okay, I'll take my. Um. All right, so uh, well, actually, you first? know what? <laughs> Kaylee what? thinks they look fantastic, and he keeps them oh, on. Oh my god! Nice. <laughs> I love it. Yes. Well, can um, I? Sorry, go ahead. No. Oh uh, well. Um. I suppose this is the way to. Um, I'm not the best with direction, but. I'm guessing this is on the way to everything we need. Almost as if like a bell ringing. You don't hear anything, but you feel it. 
Lavelli and Erephus. Uh oh. You can't explain why, but you just know the thing you're looking for that you lost, it's here somewhere. All right. Lavelli steps up to the edge of the Queen's Way and stares out across the swamp. Roll, roll me a serpent. perception check. Can I do the same? Roll me a perception check. Anyone who's I'm looking, roll me a perception check. So good at perception. What do my bird eyes see? Ops are good. Oh my God, rolls you're all a nine. fucking blind. <laughs> Chester is a six. Calic is a nine. Lavelli's a sixteen. I guess I'll use advantage. The one that the other one that I have, and yeah. I'll, oh, I should wait, use mine. Okay, yeah, go for it. The advantages don't carry over. Use them. Learn to have bird eyes. I'll, I'll use mine then. Okay. Is that a reroll then for the? Yeah, year? that's a reroll. <laughs> that's even worse. <laughs> nice. Gorgeous. <laughs> Fantastic. Stunning. All right, hold on. Final numbers are. That's going to be a <laughs> twenty-two for Chester, a nine for Arifis. An 18 for Ricaria, a 12 Wait, wouldn't, from Caleb. Wouldn't Chester be eight? Because advantage. No, I, no, you re-roll. Up. You just re-roll. I re-rolled oh, okay. my advantage. Yeah. Yep. Um. My asset. And that's gonna be a 16 from Lavelli. Okay. God, you all suck. Uh. What? Okay, Ricaria. Excuse me. Ricaria, you see, in the distant sky, you spot a giant balloon made of patchwork material. It spins out of control as though it has been punctured, causing the wicker basket that hangs from it to swing wildly. The balloon plunges out of sight, disappearing into the fog approximately a mile away to the east. Ricario pointed out towards the east there and say, I just saw something fall uh, from the sky it's like a balloon or something. I think there's like a basket. I don't know. We should look there. Over there. That way. Oh, I see the west. They point east. All right. Well, that's um, <laughs> better than nothing. So let's uh, let's go check it out. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, um, really quick. Uh, before we left, Mr. Witch and Mr. Light told Calic and I. Um, oh gosh. Uh, it was mind, mind the, the rule rules. of three. Future, Future present, 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 past. Find the alicorn and free the dormant queen at last. Is that like a unicorn with a lot of horns? Uh, it's a, if I recall, it's a bunny rabbit unicorn. Or an alligator. I don't know if Stella what? would prefer me to make a roll to know that. <laughs> um, because I can also probably roll. Fine. Oh, um, okay. Sorry, uh. I was staring at it on the map that we used for the last like four, three. Adventures. So you're thinking of an Al Mirage? Ah. <laughs> uh. Can I make a nature check or something? Yeah. Mm, mm, mm. Uh, so that wouldn't be with advantage, so it would be a six. Um, but I do have the trait. I think it's researcher. Um, so if I attempt to learn or recall a piece of lore uh, that I don't know, I often know where I can obtain it, like the information or who. From okay. Whom. Um. Okay. So with a twenty-one. Um. Hmm. Oh no, it'd be a six. Just a six. Not really, okay. Yeah. Um, with this. Can six... I? Can I do a salty sailor tavern rumor history check? Sure. Thanks. Fourteen. <laughs> okay. Well, with a six, um, what Kalik has said out loud is definitely an al mirage. It's not the same as an alicorn. Uh, you have no idea what the fuck an alicorn is, but you know what an al mirage is. It's a mm. rabbit with a unicorn horn. Lavelli, with a 14, I'm going to say that you're not quite sure. Maybe something to do with unicorns? It sounds right. Okay. <laughs> the stealth roll. Same thing Erephus. for Erephus. Yeah. That's so cool. So you're kind of like looking down off of the causeway and you see that it drops 100 feet. But you see that there are things in the fog below. You spot that there are tiers of mushrooms that kind of grow down. So you could probably like bounce off of them if you wanted. There are little handholds you can climb down if you like. But you do get the sense any direction that you want to go, you're going to have to start by going down. I'm a climb. Okay. 
Wait, how far down is it? I would like 100 to feet. Okay. Wait, wait, jump. what? Who's jumping? I want to jump on the mushroom. <laughs> that sounds fun. Are you sure that's the best idea? She watches no. Rikaria like starts. Rikaria is like going. It's like. I have a question. We've been up all night too. I am tired. It I mean, would probably be uh, safest to create to set up a camp here. Harder for predators to reach us. Clear views in each in every direction. Yeah. You want to rest we, on the Queen's Way before you descend? We should sleep. I mean, seems I like the safest know. place. Yes, yeah. I, I would say so. Okay. Erephus is halfway down. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just like Erephus, you will hear them say this if you want to stop. Uh, cramp, and I'll start climbing back up. Okay. Yeah, it's really easy to climb. You find that there's no difficulty whatsoever. There are plenty of handholds and footholds. So as the group of you kind of huddle together on the queen's way here, just, just kind of hunkering down, you do find that there is a bit of debris here and there. So if you want to make a campfire, you can do that. Mm -hmm. Who wants to do that? Lavelle doesn't have can things anymore. That, oh, Lavelle's going to try to make a fire because she can't. Yeah, okay. Lavelle, you start trying to make a fire. For some reason, you just can't do it. It's almost as if you're cursed. <laughs> She's like, I know this should work. Oh, okay, I, I've got it. Um, and they'll uh, they'll point towards like put some like you know foliage and stuff there. And as they reach their hand out, do you see that the foliage like necrotizes and it just turns black and suddenly like bursts into a small flame? This fire, huh? <laughs> Here we go. Fire. Wait, so you can just make any plant spontaneously combust? Well, I just use it as fuel, basically. Erythus. Oh, yeah. You spot something shiny on your way up. You see that in one of the handholds, there seems to be a loose rock. And it's not quite like the others. One of you these have things to, is not like the others. You have to reach into a hole to get it. One of these things is a snake. Um, I <laughs> will reach into the hole for the shiny. Okay, you grab the shiny. It appears to be a purple mushroom, but it's made out of gemstone. You have drawn the gem card. Ooh. So you can add a mushroom gemstone to your inventory worth a thousand gold. Ooh. Look at that. You had the last good card. <laughs> uh oh. Calic. <sighs> <laughs> <laughs> Every damn time. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna turn you into Batman by the end of the story. Bear's dead. <laughs> uh, so. Where's the Joker? As the group of you begin to wind down to sleep and rest for the night, Ellie will keep watch. Okay, Kalik. You have very bad dreams. Fitting. In fact, the dreams are so bad that you're convinced they're real. You have a terrible dream where someone breaks into your family home, murders one of your parents, and kidnaps the other one. You have drawn the skull card. Terrible thing has just happened. And you're completely aware of it now. Hey, now we don't have to randomly find out later. Yeah, you know. <laughs> it's a good thing. Hey. And it looks like you have something to find after all. But yeah, now that you have no way back. <laughs> but you are asleep. We cannot react quite yet. And this is where we're going to end our session for tonight. Yay. Golf maps, everyone. Golf maps. <laughs> Yeah. Yay. Oh, oh man. And that was much rejoicing. Thank you so much, everyone, for all of your generosity. We drew yes. the entire deck today. Holy shit. Yes. I didn't I think this was perfect though, because it was Emma's first time here with this group. And we did a yes. lot of like building of plot. We have so many plot Yo, points that yes. we can explore. Oh, it's gonna be great. Emma could have used like eight more cards. <laughs> yeah, I am. I agree. So just give one person the entire okay. deck? Is that what you're saying? Yeah, <laughs> oh next session, God. let's let's give Emma the whole deck. 
Oh my gosh. <laughs> All right, uh, we're gonna go around. Please tell me who you are, where we can find you, and tell us what your favorite part about today's episode was. And we're gonna start with V. Hello, I'm Vertigo. Uh, Vertigo Cross on Twitch. I like to play random games as I feel like it. You can usually catch me late at night or on Mondays with Stella. Uh, as for my favorite part, uh, I was a big fan of the moment that Lavelli and Erica said. Dang it, that's the one I was gonna say. It can Same. be our favorite part. <laughs> Wait, which moment? Uh, I love the void. Dang it, that's what I was gonna <laughs> say. Hey, Mom, that was my favorite part. Now that you like it, it's not cool anymore. Yeah, <laughs> gotta say something else. Next, we have Zombie. Oh man, I don't know what to say. You know, it's gonna be my favorite. Hello. <laughs> I am Jay I'm Jacob. I am Zombie. I am Z. I'm what uh, whatever those three like to call me. I am the lore keeper, clip master. I probably do too many clips, but that's up your own discretion. Um favorite moment. Uh um We can all say the same thing. <laughs> we could all say the same thing, but you know what? I think that we we've, we've done it before where our favorite moment has been the entire game. I'm gonna spice it up a little bit. I'm gonna say that my favorite moment has been all of the cards, just all of the different cards that's been kind of been adding to the plot points and all that, um, including the ones from last time. So we can include my little crowning is thing, which to me, I thought all my cards were played last session. So that really came to a surprise. Even though I yeah. watched the VOD, I didn't realize that my last card wasn't played. So that was that was sort of that was sort of nice. Yep, you drew the throne card last time and also yeah. this time. So you went oh, from being wow. the Witchlight Carnival uh, monarch to employee of the month. Love it. <laughs> oh, yeah. okay. So we blended the two. Okay. Yep. Huh. Yeah. Okay, you had Truly double a throw. higher honor. Nice. <laughs> yeah, I couldn't remember if it was either me or Chester that it was going to go to. Yeah. <laughs> so I was confused by that. But yeah, that's those are that's all. Of that is my favorite parts. Uh, and then, um, as far as me goes, you can find me on Twitter at ZombieFighter89. You can find me on this channel all the time, because I hang out here. I hang out in Robo's Discord, Stella's Discord, probably a few other Discords I hang out with. Some people like to have me around, and, and that's great. And, uh, as well, every Monday at, um, 10.30pm, we do the Nice and Nirvana with my friend Matthew over there. We talk nerdy news, it's so fun. And if you're not sick of seeing my face here on a Wednesday. You can come join me next week when we do the Ghost Salt Marsh campaign where I am with Emma and it's a whole lot of fun and I really, really enjoy the the uh, whole thing I do with Finn over there as well. Excellent. Thank you so much. Uh, next we have B Street Holmes. Hi guys. Uh, I'm Matthew or B Street Holmes most places. Um, like Jacob said, uh, Monday nights at 10. We do... <laughs> I said 10. You did 10.30. Oh, well, whatever. <laughs> I like this running It's cool joke. to be fashionably late. <laughs> I mean, we don't start on we time. We don't start until 10.15, so I'm Anyways, happy. Anyways, uh, uh, but we, we do uh, nerd news. Um, if you uh, join the Stella's Discord, um, Jacob is always really good about sharing a link in there when we are about to begin on Monday. So you will always be able to make it. We'd love to have you. Um, and I think... My favorite part of this, um, I I love seeing things not go Calix way. And so I really enjoyed the conversation that Lavelli had uh, when she was stressed out about having lost Darla's uh, child's ball because I think Calix needs those moments of people being like, what the fuck is wrong with you? <laughs> you prick. Um, but I also want to say I I watched the the uh the video of last time as well, and I'm a little OCD, so I counted cards as we went through. So I loved that I knew it was gonna be Chester and and Jacob didn't know because that was really like as as Stella's building up to it, I'm watching everybody's faces as they react to what she says. And I that that made me happy on sort of like an outside of the actual events part. <laughs> oh, that's so cute. Thank you so much. Next we have Emmar. 
Hi, I'm Amar, Amar. also known as Emma Panada. You can Frigurd. find me on Twitch and Twitter at Emma Panada. On Twitter, I shitpost. On Twitch, I run TTRPG games. Um, so yeah, that's that's what I do. You can also find me here on Wednesdays uh, for either this campaign or for Secrets of Saltmarsh uh, because those are the Wednesday games and yeah that's that's me my favorite part of the session um i really liked how i got to sprinkle in hints of what's going on with arifus uh while not directly saying what's going on with arifus i think that's fun um but i also just kind of want to hype up um the moment where calic and Lavelli were like kind of arguing with one another after Lavelli lost her clothes and was just kind of like, what's your fucking deal? You know, <laughs> like, I think that was like a really good kind of like tense conflict scene. Uh, and I thought that was uh, like fun. Awesome. Thank you, Maddie. Hello, I'm Matihi, otherwise known as Maddie Matihi, both on Instagram and Twitter. I am mostly over on Emma Panada's channel running various games. Uh, every Tuesday I run a Curse of Strahd game. Right now they're pretty deep into it. And uh, we had a guest this week, which they're coming back on as well. Um, our friend Nina Wolverina, she's uh, an amazing artist. We also play with, of course, Emma, uh, Stacy, and Bikake, who did all the art for the character portraits and stuff, um, as well as our friend Monster X Bait. Uh, it is a good time, so come there if you want flirting and such, because I can't stop myself. Um, I'm also there oh, yeah. on Fridays. <laughs> um, of course, playing Kondo, who's an airbender in our Avatar Legends game. Um, and also, occasionally, when we don't run Curse of Strahd, uh, we run Jimothy and Friends, which is a wonderful, very cute game with this cute little boy right here. Hello. <laughs> He's the best boy. Um, but yeah. Oh God. My sorry, Timothy. Um, my favorite moment of the night. Um, oh God. I'm trying to think, because a lot of them have been said. Of course, the the moment in the mine cart ride where um, okay, Timothy needs to go away. Um, the mine cart ride where uh, there's like that tender moment between Arafus and Lavelli. But I also really like when we were on the um, the swans and everything. And everyone could kind of talk about themselves in a way. Um, and finally being able to explore, I guess, some more emotional stuff with Rick, especially. Because um, I've kept him pretty happy most of the time. Um, so kind of going deeper into certain other feelings, which is a lot of fun. But yeah, overall, it's this is an amazing game. It's so much fun. Yeah. Yay! My favorite part was right off the bat, Arifus meeting the group. Lavelli's just naked. Ah, uh, <laughs> it was so good. Great intro. Yep. It just kind thanks of. For, thanks for making it easy. Yeah. <laughs> Listen. Listen, it's kind of like that thing where it's like, you know, when you go to an interview or you have to do some public speaking, just imagine everyone naked, right? Because it's like, that's, that's how it's supposed to help you, like, you know, realize that, oh, you know, you're just people. It's all right. You know, just. I made Lavelli naked for you. You imagine too strong. It doesn't work. <laughs> it doesn't work. It doesn't work. No, not luckily, at all. Luckily, feathers are sensor friendly. I have a question from chat. How is the group liking everything in the Wild Beyond the Witchlight so far? So we just finished chapter one. Mm -hmm. Now we're starting chapter two. How do you feel? I'm, I'm loving it. I'm so really excited am. to see what's next. It's, it's, it's fantastic. Mm -hmm. I just want to find a displacer beast child. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you're going to find that this mood and the vibe is going to be a little different. We're still going to have that really whimsical feel, but we're not at the carnival anymore. Yeah. The adventure not begins all fun now. And games anymore. The games no. are over. This is real life now. Okay. Uh, Thank you so much, everyone, for being here. I'm Stella Luna. If you've enjoyed the show, please give us a follow. That's a free way that you can support us here at the channel. You'll also get notifications for when we go live and go catch more of this content. 
Next week, 8 p.m. Wednesday, we're going to be playing our Secrets of Salt Marsh Patreon Greyhawk campaign. This show will be on the week afterwards. We play every other week, uh, same time, 8 p.m. Eastern time. I just want to give a couple of really important announcements. Happy birthday to Drac tomorrow! It's going to be birthday, birthday. Drac! Drac. Technically, I think, I think it's already his birthday right it now. Is. Right? Yes. It is! Yes! Happy, yeah. happy birthday. Happy he happy might birthday. have gone to bed already, but... Double uh, birthday. Unbound is going to be back on next Friday, the 7th of January. Happy New Year's, everyone. Happy New um, Year. Yes. So that's going to be us back from our hiatus. Unbound is our saucy campaign that uses adventures from Uncaged Anthology. We're a bunch of demigods going around killing other gods, challenging demons, and smooching all of the NPCs. It's very chaotic energy. I welcome yes. you. I encourage you to come to check us out. If, if that is your vibe, I swear to God, it'll be the greatest thing you ever see on a Friday night, and you will tune in every single week. I'm, like, I'm, 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 addicted, I'm addicted to it myself. I love being there as many Fridays as I can be. I'm very happy y'all are taking your break. Everyone deserves to have a break and enjoy the holidays and enjoy whatever it is to happen. But when it comes back, I'm going to be so happy and so hyped. Oh, thank you. Watching uh, hot ladies slay gods and slay gals. <laughs> Who wouldn't want to see that? <laughs> <laughs> uh, so two more announcements. Um, I am currently looking for players. Uh, if you're interested in playing in a game like this, uh, it's not a full campaign, but we are hosting a paid opportunity Thank you so much, Patreons. We can do this cool, these cool things because of the Patreons. So thank you, everyone here. Thank you, thank mm -hmm. you. Uh, so we will have a three-episode miniseries playing Urban Shadows 2. It is a political, modern, urban, supernatural adventure. Uh, you can check out the information there in the chat for that tweet. You can also just find all this information on my Twitter, which is Stella Luna TV. And then the other announcement I want to do is that I am looking for players for Sovereign, which is going to be a full campaign. This is going to be an Arthurian legend inspired 5th edition D&D game where we're following the adventures of the Wild Witch Queen Morgana Le Fay. And we're going to be part of the Fay Court as we seek to usurp the warlord princess Guinevere. So it's going to be a bit of like a different take. We're going to subvert a bunch of tropes. It's going to be a bunch of hot babes, swords, war, curses, you know, forbidden kisses, all that kind of mm -hmm. stuff. So That's we're looking for fun. cast. We're also looking for sponsors. So if you're interested in any of that, you can check out all that stuff in that link there. Thank you so much, everyone, for all the love. We'll be back in two weeks. Have a good rest of your day. Bye-bye, everybody. Bye. 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 Bye.